everyone, welcome to my So You Want to Make a Bra series of video tutorials. This is series one. If you have followed my previous videos, then you will by now know how to measure yourself up for the bra pattern that you've chosen and also how to have established your correct wire size. So now we're ready to start sewing. I'm going to be demonstrating how the techniques and the sewing construction order for a regular underwired bra and I'm going to be demonstrating it using the classic pattern by um, from Pinup Girls by Beverly Johnson but as I explained in the introduction um, to the whole series the techniques and the sewing order and so on and so forth that I'm going to be showing you will apply to just about any non padded underwired bra pattern so later on in series three, I'm going to be talking about how to style your bra with lace and um, different styles of band and using foam cups, etc. Um, but for now, I think it's best to just learn the basics of sewing and fitting a bra using something that's fairly straightforward, which the classic pattern is. The um, before we sort of plunge, as it were, into anything overly complicated, you need to understand the process of sewing a bra and then later on how to recognise the fit issues. If you use a pattern that's overly complicated, the more difficult it's going to be for you, especially as a beginner, um, assuming you are a beginner, it's the more difficult it's going to be to see what the issues are and how you can fix it. Of course, if you've already got your pattern and it isn't the classic, that's perfectly fine. Everything that I do in this video is applicable to just about any underwired bra, as I've just said. As this is an ongoing series of videos, though, if you would like to see me at some point sew a specific bra from start to finish, a kind of a sew along, if you like, of some um, of any other bra, if there's enough um, interest in any particular style of how-to video then I'll happily do it later on. Uh, if there's a bra that you'd particularly like to see me sew from start to finish um, and sew along with me then please just make a comment, drop it in the comments to this video and I'll see how much interest we get. In this video I'm assuming no previous knowledge of bra making but you do need to know how to sew. You need to be familiar with using a sewing machine. This is not for an absolute beginner who's never uh, sewn before. Um, it's absolutely, uh, I have seen things and people say that they do it, but to my mind, it's absolutely not possible to make an underwired bra by hand. Um, I just, I don't care what anybody else says to my mind. If you can do it, then that's fine. Uh, but to my mind, you absolutely have to use a sewing machine. And it just needs to be a relatively straightforward machine. You're just going to need a straight stitch, a zigzag, adjustable width zigzag. Um, a three-step zigzag is really, really good. And one that does a kind of lightning stretch stitch is excellent, but you don't need that particular stitch. You just need those three basic types. So if some parts of this video seem a bit too basic for your knowledge, your level of ability um, and so on, then obviously just fast forward to the next bit. Uh, equally, if there's something that you're not certain about, then you can just pause me while you figure it out for yourself or else you can rewind. And yes, I know you probably know that already. You must know how to work a YouTube video. But like I said, throughout my whole teaching career, um, I've always worked on the principle of assume the students know nothing. I'm going to show you the way that I do things. If you found a better way for yourself to do a certain thing, then by all means do it that way. I can obviously I can only show you the way that I do it. Um, as long as you've got a clear understanding of what the finished project should look like, then the way you get there is obviously personal preference. There are a couple of steps where you really must I say must, that sounds horrible, but anyway, you really ought to do it the way that I demonstrate. And if that is the case, whenever that's the case, I will make that clear. Okay, these are the supplies that I use because I found they work best for me. I always use a Schmetz 
needle size 7511. I hope you can see that there. These particular ones um, I use because it's what I first learnt with. Uh, they always work on the fabrics and the elastics that I use and so I've got no reason to change them. You might use a different brand or so on but it must be a stretch needle. Don't use a ballpoint needle. It just won't penetrate the elastics and you'll get skipped stitches. So you may have it in your head that ballpoint needles equals stretchy materials and that's what we're using, elastic and stretch fabric here. But that's just not true. They are meant for stretch jersey fabrics that might ladder. But if you found that that type of needle works okay for you and your machine with this type of fabric and so on, then, then that's fine. I found that one needle lasts for two, maybe three bras. So that's bras and not years. Bra fabrics and elastics are quite tough little devils and take their toll on the needles. So for best results, change your needle quite often and you'll, you'll get to recognise when your needle is giving up the ghost. I use Dritz extra long, extra fine glass headed pins, size 22 I think they are when you look it up on Amazon or wherever you go to get them. Because as lovely as those antique family heirloom pins handed down from your grandmother might be, keep them for display purposes only. And when your pins get bent, that's definitely when, not if, when your pins get bent, throw them away. Well, discard them thoughtfully, I suppose I should say. I use a rotary cutter and a mat because bra pieces, particularly the cut pieces, are quite small and curvy. For me, scissors just don't cut it, for want of a better expression, because they lift the fabric up as you cut and sometimes that can distort the pieces. But whatever cutting implement you use, please make sure it's sharp. As tempting as it might be, that one pound pair from Lidl is just not going to be your friend in the long run. Needles, pins and scissors or rotary crosser, they have to be sharp. It's going to save you hours of frustration if you make sure that all these things are properly sharp. They're the main tools of, of sewing and dressmaking after all. Right, the fabrics I'm going to use are Duoplex and Powernet. The Duoplex is for the front frame and the cups and the straps. The Powernet is for the back band. Proper authentic duoplex is soft to the touch, but strong and supportive. So I've seen loads of posts on Facebook complaining that people are having trouble sewing duoplex. It's obvious to me from the pics that are posted that the fabric they're trying to use is not really proper duoplex. Duoplex is 100% polyester, and many of the fabrics that I've seen pictured are really um, nylon tree codes, not the same thing at all. Your power net needs to be strong with a decent degree of stretch. It's normally about 20% stretch and it has to have great recovery. In other words, it takes a little bit of effort to stretch it and then when you let go, it goes back to its original size. So as I explained in a previous video, there has to be the right amount of tension in the frame to provide the structure for an underwired bra. It's not enough for the back band just to be stretchy. It, it, it has to be strong and supportive. And then there are the findings, i.e. the elastics, the underwire channeling and the hardware. Again, I explained the differences between them and what they're all used for in a previous video. So those are all my supplies. Let's get started. Okay, I've traced my size off from my pattern. I always suggest tracing the pattern off, whether you've used a all-in-one paper pattern then you have to choose your pick your own size off or whether you've downloaded a pdf even if it's a pdf where it's one size per sheet or something like that i think it's much better to keep a master copy of the size before you do anything with it then that way if you do some alterations and it all goes horrifically wrong somewhere and you want to go back and start at the beginning you've got your original pattern so i always trace my patterns off i think hope you can see i mark up all the obvious things so this is the pattern piece this is the outer uh, lower cup marked in my dog's line the direction of greatest stretch or strength depending on which um, piece of pattern you're cutting out it's kind of like a grain line on regular fabrics if you're used to normal dressmaking I've marked my notches 
really important to mark your notches because you'll be hopelessly lost otherwise. It's so easy to flip bits upside down. This particular piece, it's easy to end up sewing that on this edge, instead of that edge. All sorts of horrific things can happen if you don't mark your notches on your pattern and subsequently on your fabric, obviously. And the other thing that I do when I, whoever it's for, myself or anyone else, I put my initials on and the date, well, I just put the month and the year. Um, I put version one, because this is my first go of this pattern uh, in this size. I've written on my wire size and I've written the size I'm making. So this is a 4.75 bottom cup depth and a 36 band. So that then when um, I've done some alterations and I end up with three or four versions of the same pattern, I know which one I'm looking at. So always put version one and who it's for and so on. You've just got as much information on there as you need so that sometime when you come back to it, you can work out exactly what you did. The other thing I would mention is that um, on the classic pattern piece, on the upper cup, you'll see that the dog's line is marked here. And it's also marked up here. And if you read what it says, it says the direction of greatest stretch follows the neckline edge. So depending on what size you're making, the neckline edge is slightly slanted. So just make sure that you don't just blindly copy this line, that you put your ruler parallel to the neck edge along here and that's where you mark your particular dog's line for the upper cut piece for your particular size. I uh, think that I, you can see that I pinned my pieces on using as few pins as uh, possible. The pieces are really quite small but they are quite curvy so you need to secure them. You can of course use pattern weights whatever you normally use. The only trouble I find with using pattern weights is if I want to manipulate the fabric to get to a particular angle as I'm cutting out. Of course, it's more difficult when it's just weighted down. But whatever method you like to use, go ahead and use that. I'm not going to make you uh, sit there and watch me cut this out. I'll um, edit that in in a second. But what I wanted to show you is that I have worked out where the direction of greatest stretch is on this particular fabric. In duoplex fabric, it doesn't give very much but it does give a little bit so I hope you can see when I pull it slightly it rolls that's the dogs that's the direction of greatest stretch and I have marked it with a friction pen and a ruler on this piece of fabric so that I have a reference all the time I'm not constantly thinking oh golly which way around is this again I've done that there and I've also done it on my power net piece I've worked out the dogs on power net it's when you stretch it the little holes i'm showing you this you probably can't see but the little holes get smaller and thinner don't do it so that the holes get bigger that's the wrong way and when i've established that i've marked it in so that i have a constant um, visual reference all the time and what i've done as you just saw on the power net and also on this piece is i haven't just folded it in half the Front frame needs to be cut out with the bridge section on the fold. But I haven't just simply folded the fabric in half because this piece is ample for the size that I'm making. So I've just folded it enough to get this pattern piece on. And you can see I've got all my other pattern pieces on. And then I have um, a bunch of fabric that I can use for a mock-up or something else, a practice piece or whatever later on. Uh, I've also done the same on the power net as you can see. I've just laid it out um, against the edge with the minimum amount of fold. So I have this fabric left for subsequent bras or practice pieces. I always use a rotary cutter, as I said in my introduction. Um, I'm going to show you how to use a rotary cutter. If you've not used one before and you're afraid of them, I'll just demonstrate. Where you have a straight line piece, so my strap is a nice straight line. I always use a ruler and just push with your finger along and then follow the shape. The whole point of using a rotary cutter is that it's a clean, sharp cut 
don't hack away at it like that. If you're having to do that with your rotary cutter, then you really need a, a new blade. Nice and smooth, and the same with cutting out the curves. So I'll go ahead and cut these pieces out and see you again in a moment. Okay, I've cut all my pieces out now, as you can see, and I've laid them out in the way that they're going to be stitched together. I think it's a really useful thing to do, especially when you're new and you're not entirely sure about pieces and where they go. With the pattern still pinned on, I've laid it out so that I can see exactly how it's going to be when I come to start sewing it together. It's a good idea, if you, especially if you're new, as I say, to maybe take a little picture. Once you've got it all laid out and you're sure you've referred to your pattern and so on and you're happy that that's the way it all goes together, it's useful, I think, to take a picture. Then you've got um, a useful reference if you go away in the middle and come back after a couple of days or whatever it is, you know what happens, life gets in the way sometimes then you have a reference of what you're supposed to be doing and where. For the same reason, I keep the pattern pieces pinned onto the fabric until I'm ready to sew each section together. Then that way I know it's an actual piece of bra and not a piece of scrap fabric because some of the bits are so um, unfamiliar to you. If you've got a little pile of fabric and you're trying to have a clear up um, every six months like I do whether my sewing room needs it or not but um, if you're having a clear up and you think oh that's no good I'll chuck that away because it's just scrap fabric it turns out to be part of your bra you'll be very sad so I do it that way then I have my pile of spare fabric as I explained before where I've, I've got it left over from the way I cut it out and then I've kept a scrap like this so that I can test my stitch length and tension and all that kind of thing before I start to sew. So I think that's all the prep done. Oh no, just one, we're talking about the um, pattern. I've made sure that I've marked all my notches here. You can see the little red marks. I'd like to use a friction pen. I don't use little snip marks like I do when I'm doing regular sewing because I've got a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance then and there's plenty of room but this is only a quarter of an inch. And so by the time you've done a snip big enough for you to be able to see, you've cut into your seam allowance quite a bit and sort of compromised the fabric more than I like to. And so I make some kind of a mark, either with a fabric marker, if you've got regular fabric markers, or I do like a friction pen. They are regular stationary items if you're not familiar with them. They're not a specialist fabric marker, so if you're looking for them on Amazon or in the supermarket, wherever, they are just normal stationary items. The thing about them is that the ink disappears with heat. So since we're always pressing as we go along when we're sewing, or we should be, as we're always pressing, the heat of the iron or the steam will make the marks disappear. There is a bit of a downside. Sometimes we sew a seam, press it, and then find that a marking for something else has disappeared by mistake. But that's fine, you can just go in and, and mark it again. I think it's a small price to pay knowing for knowing that your marks will disappear um, when you've finished. Sometimes I've used a fabric marker pen um, and it's not washed out when it should have done, especially on light coloured fabrics. So a good old friction pen or whatever method you chair, uh, sorry, care to use do make sure you've transferred all your notches. So now we've done all the prep, it's time to take to the sewing machine and start sewing our bras together. Right now, after all our measuring and tracing and marking and so on and so forth, here we are at the sewing machine, my favorite place to be. I've got my pieces here that we cut out and marked up um, as I was saying just now. I've kept my pattern pieces on here so I know what's what and I've checked that I've done all my markings. So we're all ready to start sewing, but first of all, we need to do some practice and some uh, note taking. We first of all need to, I think it's a good idea anyway, to start off by uh, making a note of what stitch settings you need on your machine for which part of the bra. I have a chart here, you might not want to go this far, you might want to just make notes, but I've got a chart that I usually um, prepare for students. I've got the stitch type here, and as you can see we do um, 
we do a straight stitch, a narrow zigzag and a three step zigzag uh, in bra making normally. Then I've put whereabouts on the bra, those stitches are going to be used. Then I have a column for the width of the stitch and a column for the length of the stitch. My chart looks like this. I, these are the sizes that I use. It might be useful to you to take a little note and give you a starting point for your machine. But the main point I'm trying to make is that you need to be familiar with what your machine is happy with and that you like the look of in your bra when you're sewing. So for me, um, a straight stitch is used for the seams and I obviously not applicable is the width because it's a straight stitch. The length I like to be around 2.4, 2.5, something like that. When I sew the channeling on, I like the stitch length to be longer and that's because the channeling is sewn through two layers of fabric plus the channeling itself is quite thick. So a longer stitch makes it easier for your machine to handle it and also heaven forbid that you ever have to undo channeling. You'll be grateful that you used a longer stitch. Top stitching, also obviously the width not applicable. The length is 3.2 again as I use for channeling. I like top stitching to look like it's supposed to be on show, not tiny like seam stitching and not so long that it looks like tacking stitch. Then the elastics, the first pass of the elastics, and I'll explain what that means when we get to sewing them on later on if you're not familiar with that term. The first pass of the elastics, I use a narrow zigzag width two and length two. Then the three step zigzag, which is for the second pass of the elastics, you can see I have two different settings. The top band and neckline elastics are quite narrow and therefore I like to use a width of four when I do three step zigzag and I just leave my machine on the default length, which is one or something like that. Then the bottom band elastic is usually wider and so I have a 4.5 width for that when I do it. And again, just whatever default length my machine wants to do. So let's do some practice sewing and see um, what we need to fill out there. Let me grab, sorry, grab some bits and bobs here to be doing. I'll switch my machine on. Hopefully this won't make the lighting go all peculiar, but um, fingers crossed. First of all, let's just do some uh, seam sewing. So scrap bit of fabric, fold it in half, pop it under your foot. Not your foot, the machine's foot, obviously. I uh, have got it set on 2.4, yes, that's fine. When I start off sewing, um, it's not uh, recommended that you use backstitch when you start, when you sew your bra seams. It's because the seam allowances are so narrow and bits intersect each other. And if you've got a lot of thread from going backwards and forwards doing uh, backstitch, it makes it quite clunky. You don't really want that. Um, also, every seam is stitched and then top stitched, so it's not likely to come undone. But if you're not sure and you have this function, you can press the locking stitch on your machine that does the up and down in one place lock stitch. But in any case, whatever you do, keep hold of your threads. I don't know if this is your habit in any kind of sewing. It tends to be mine when I remember anyway. Um, it stops the bobbin thread getting all snarled up and making a bird's nest underneath. It also gives you um, a help to ease the fabric through at the beginning of every seam. do to get the idea what that looks like. I'm happy with that. That's not too puckered. It's not too long looking. It will give a nice secure seam without doing too many kind of perforations. If you do your stitches too short, it's like making a perforation. And so you can, um, your fabric might tear apart. Sounds a bit drastic, but best not to have that. So I'm happy with that. So I would fill out my chart if I hadn't filled it out already. Or make a note of it. Then let's see what, sorry I grabbed this piece back, let's see what top stitching looks like. So I'm going to make my stitch a little bit longer and see how that goes. Grab my threads again. And that's a bit longer. It looks like it's meant to be on show, but it's not so long that 
it looks like tacking stitch as I said before so I'm happy with that too let's have a look at the zigzag so it makes sense since the zigzag is used for sewing on elastic to nab a little piece of elastic to practice with I'm going to put this on as it will be when it's the real thing oops all fingers and thumbs select my zigzag bring it down to two and the length up to two and pop this under here and keep my fingers on my threads to start with sorry let me just get hold of that there we go what I'm checking this for is that it's um, when I turn it to the wrong side you can see the little row of picots there and the stitching is quite nicely spaced it's not too gappy and it's not too close together to make the elastic go all uh, kind of wrinkled so again I'm happy with that so while I've got this piece here I'm going to switch to three step zigzag and adjust my width down to four because the aim of the three step zigzag is to keep it all within the elastic when we come to sew on the elastics later on in the bra I will explain this all properly so if you're not familiar with it um, just bear with me just do some practicing even if you're not sure what it is you're practicing for okay yep so you can see that the stitching stays within the elastic and on the right side because this uh, stitching always shows on the right side it looks quite nice it's quite flat the thing with the three step zigzag is that it does three tiny stitches in each direction side to side instead of one big sweep because I don't know if you found this but if it does one big sweep like that the thread tends to make the fabric tunnel kind of in the middle it doesn't look very pretty um, this was this looks much nicer also, it's, it is the st stitch that is recommended for sewing on elastic. Now, we're not using stretch fabric, really, so we don't need to maintain the stretch of the elastic. But if you are sewing elastic onto anything else and you still want it to stretch, a three-step zigzag is perfect. It's what it's designed to do if you've never used your three-step zigzag on your machine before. Um, that's my zigzags. Let's just, I think, one last thing to check whoopsie I've confused myself doesn't take much is uh, sewing on some channeling so I'm just going to put my straight stitch back put my stitch length longer and pop this on so as I say channeling goes on to two um, layers of fabric and one layer of the channeling it is quite thick so it can be a little bit of a tough job for your machine so we're going to help it out by making the stitch longer once I get it in there there we are you see how the stitches kind of disappear into the plush um, face of the channeling so it does make it it would make it quite difficult if you ever had to unpick it whereas the longer stitch you can get to at the back you can unpick it it's still um, quite nice and strong so it's not the stitches aren't so far spaced that it's not really holding it I am happy with that right now so far so good the next thing we need to check is how are you going to make sure that you are sewing a quarter inch seams because all of the bra seams any lingerie in fact is a quarter of an inch seamed and if like me you're used to working with regular dressmaking with a five eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance it can seem very tiny so you need a way of telling that you're keeping to the proper seam allowance now unfortunately most uh, throat plates on most machines don't have a quarter of an inch leaping out at you mine for example is all metric so <laughs> uh, 
but if you have one that's in imperial measurements you tend to have a quarter of an inch and three eighths of an inch sorry an eighth of an inch and three eighths of an inch nothing just a tiny mark to denote a quarter of an inch and you can easily lose track of that actually I can see on mine the imperial measurements are at the back they're no good at the back it's already stitched anyway so there are a number of ways you can help yourself to make sure that you're doing a quarter of an inch seam this machine is a quilter's machine not because I do quilting but just because I like the other functions and the big table it has an automatic quarter of an inch seam setting so when I press that you possibly saw my needle move and now when I line up the fabric along the right hand edge of the foot here that gives me a quarter of an inch if your machine doesn't have that but it does allow you to move the needle position then you can just move it so a quarter of an inch is six millimeters so I can move this so that it's six millimeters well actually like 5.8 um, but again when I line up the fabric against the right hand edge of the foot the needle is in the quarter inch position let me pop that back before I forget oopsie daisy it's like trying to tune in a radio here just a second let me there we go um, the other option is obviously a quarter inch foot that you can get I don't like changing feet in the middle of the project because quite often I forget and so I've got the wrong foot on I put it on a zigzag and break the needle that, that's just my memory you you may have a better memory and be more sensible but if that's your option then that's fine a quarter inch foot when you're sewing your seams another product is this sewing edge again it's a, a quilters aid what it is is some little strips you get five whole strips of vinyl it's and you can cut it to whatever length you want and it's kind of tacky but not sticky if that makes any sense in other words you can reuse it so once I've put this on here and then I take it off I don't need it anymore that always happens um, sorry let me just pop that back there's no stickiness left on your machine and you can put this back on the waxed paper and use it again when you buy it if you buy it it comes with a guide in here you've got this you trim off the edge of the paper and you've got a line here that says uh, position tip of needle on this line so you pop that under there line up your needle with that line like that and then the edge of the foot at the edge of the foot that's where you pop your piece of vinyl okay before in front of the needle there's no sense putting it behind because as i was just saying once your fabric's gone past the needle it's stitched there isn't anything you can do about it other than unstitch it so i've placed this here not very accurately because i'm at an angle but the idea being that once that's there you can then get your fabric because it's got a thickness to it your fabric will butt up against it like that if you put a piece of masking tape or something like that there instead the fabric can slip over it whereas this gives it a definite edge to push against so whichever one of those options suits you or if you come up with your own ingenious way of checking that you've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance going on then that's what you need to find out and make a note of or whatever you want to do here um, at this stage the other option of course that I didn't mention is if you wanted to um, sorry let's grab that beep don't beep at me when you've got your pieces cut out um, mark off a quarter of an inch seam allowance all around you the, your pieces like that and then you'll know that that's your line to follow when you're sewing the more you sew it the more you will automatically be able to see where a quarter of an inch is similarly if you like if you've done regular sewing for a long time you can automatically see five eighths of an inch um, you will gradually be able to recognize a quarter of an inch but in the beginning you need as much help as you can as you can take um, so that you can get into the swing of it nobody likes to keep on picking seams especially when they're as narrow as that okay I think we've got our stitches sorted we've got our seam allowance sorted um, all we need to do now is start to sew 
I suggest, oh, and I and that machine beeped, it did all sorts of weird things. There we go. I suggest starting with the frame pieces, the front frame and the back band. It's because you've got two seams to sew and they're both straight and it will help you to A, check your machine settings and B, get familiar with handling the fabrics without any curves and so on and so forth to um, take into consideration. So I'm going to take my pattern piece off and here and open this out. So we've cut the fold, no we haven't, we've cut the frame on the fold so it should open out into one complete piece, on at least on this particular style. Some styles have a seam that runs under here, whatever your pattern that you're making does, that's how you need to lay it out. And these are my back pieces and they go on either side as you might imagine. Now, oh, didn't, didn't mark the naughty me, I didn't mark the notch, but it goes this way up. If you lay the pieces out, what you're looking for is that the scoopy out bits like here and here are all um, lined up with each other because you can imagine can't you that this could easily flip be flipped like that and you don't want that you want it lined up notches marked <coughs> and scoopy out bits all in a line like that once you're happy with that you just flip it over now i like to sew with the power net at the bottom because the feed dogs help to feed it through power net is stretchy and if you don't keep it under control as you're sewing so it stretches and it ends up longer than the other piece some machines i've heard some people say that their machine doesn't like it the feed dogs are maybe a little bit too sharp and it tends to sort of eat the power net and if that happens with your machine then obviously sew it the other way around but for me i like to sew it with the power net down so that's how I'm going to pin it. Some people like to not use pins they're quite proud of the fact they don't need pins and if you're one of those people and that's what you like to do then good for you carry on however you like to do it. I don't oh, I just use pins um, it's my habit I suppose you can use wonder clips pop a little wonder clip on there um, they're quite good but the thing to remember when you start to pin bra pieces together is that everything's got an angle and you've often got opposing angles and all sorts going on so you need to make sure when you pin things together that what you're lining up is this seam allowance that should be the point where the two fabrics intersect each other I hope you can see that okay there's a tendency we tend to want to put the points together and do and sew things like that if I demonstrate if I've stitched that match those points and it's all lovely and I sew it when I turn it to the other side there's a great big step we don't want that so try and visualize where a quarter of an inch is going to come where the two fabrics cross over each other again if it helps you to mark the seam allowances then don't be shy about doing that and lo and behold when we do that then it's lovely and smooth and that's what you're wanting it to do so don't think that if you pin two bits together and you end up with a piece sticking up that that's wrong that's how it should be I've ended up putting the pin either side. Let's swap that round. There we go. So, over to the machine. Pop the whichever way around you want it to be. Get, make sure all your settings are where you want them. Grab your threads at the back. Line everything up. Having said that, I didn't. So, there we go. Hold the threads, do a lock stitch if you've got that. And then off you go. I, at this point, should warn you that I have a tendency to sew over pins. It's a very bad habit, I know, but I've done it for years. It's very hard to break. I try to remember not to do it in front of students, but sometimes I forget. So forgive me if I forget. 
But then just remember that just because I do it, it doesn't mean that you should do it. So let's go. There you are, I just did it. Sorry, <laughs> not on purpose. threads off and I'm going to do the same the other side in a second obviously and then I'm going to go over to the iron I'll show you uh, we want to press these seam allowances towards the duoplex and then I'm going to top stitch it do you remember I said in my video about looking inside a bra and the way, the way we construct it in the order that we do what I'm looking for is to secure that seam allowance down so it's nice and flat on the inside of the bra. So I'm going to go ahead and um, unravel this. There we go. Pin this to here, sew them, and I'll meet you back here in a second. Right, I've got my little ironing board here, um, and I've got a silk organza pressing cloth, or you can use a tea towel or whatever you want to use. I recommend having one handy. The duoplex isn't so bad. It's 100% polyester but the power net is nylon and you need to be careful about the temperature of your iron and so on otherwise you could end up with with um, half your back band stuck to the bottom of your iron so which we don't really want the main thing is that we need some steam um, to relax these fabrics and get them nice and flat so let's grab my iron let's move that out of the way I know you don't need to see me ironing, but um, it needs to be done, so you may as well watch me. So press it flat first, so that's any sewing that you do. If you're not in the habit of doing it, that's what I recommend. Sew a seam, press it flat. So a nice, nice little steam massage. And then because I'm going to top stitch it, I want to press it again. And this time I want the seam allowances all to go towards the duoplex. I want to make this um, seam as strong as possible. Remember it's the brace between this, for this tension. Um, if we top stitch it to here, uh, apart from the fact it's got holes in, um, it won't be very strong. So I want to make as much strength as I can in this seam. Cover it with my cloth and just smooth it. Don't press it to within an inch of its life. Um, it's, it's really the steam that we're looking for to just get a nice sharp seam there for top stitching against. Again, make sure my seam allowance is going towards the duoplex and smooth it out that way. go so that's nice and smooth and ready to be top stitched right fresh from its steam massage we're going to top stitch this fabric now oh I can see my thread is threatening to there we go get in the way I've reset my machine to the length that I want my top stitching to be and I've positioned my needle so that it's very slightly to the right. I don't want to stitch in the ditch, but I do want to do two rows of stitching, one close to the edge and one on the other side, because my aim is to catch this edge of the seam allowance down with my top stitching. Do you remember I said um, a while back that the whole point, the inside of a bra has to be as smooth as possible, and we want to catch the edge of these seam allowances down so that it can't flip over when we're wearing the bra. You could just do that one um, top stitching line there if you want to, but I think that two rows look nicer, look more deliberate, and also it's just stronger. You've got two rows of stitching there to help that seam um, be as strong as it can be. So, holding my threads, I'm going to start off. Go slowly, you're looking for accuracy here rather than speed. And smooth the um, 
fabrics apart a little bit so you have a nice sharp line there. I'm going to get down to the bottom. I'm going to sew off a few stitches to get a little thread chain so that I can spin this round and come back the other way. If you don't want to do that you can just finish there and snip the threads and come back the other way whichever you want to do. You can see that that seam now is nice and secure the seam allowances are stitched down flat so i will top stitch the other side to match and give it another gentle uh, steaming and then that's finished with the band for the time being and now we're going to move on to the cups okay i've top stitched and repressed my frame so that's that ready out of the way and we'll look at the the um, cups so any pattern, this is the classic as I said before, but any bra pattern, it's the same idea. You have the bottom cups, the upper cup, and the strap um, fabric or elastic, whatever it is. But the first thing to do is to sew the bottom cup pieces together. If you've only, if your pattern has one solid um, bottom cup piece, well then you have nothing to do at this stage. But if you have seams in your lower cup, this has just got one. Some stars like the ruby and so on have two or maybe even three other seams in there. However many seams you've got, you're going to sew those together first in the bottom cup. So I'll take my pins out. And I've got my markings on there so I know which way around it goes. Move those out, move these away for a moment. And here are my, let me switch that off. I think it affects the lighting, but I'm not sure. Here are my two pieces. It's vital that you've marked the notches. You can, and many's the time, well not many, but more than I care to remember that I have ended up somehow sewing that there. By coincidence, it's kind of more or less the same length. So as you're sewing it together, you don't really notice that it's not the right way up. So make sure you mark your notches, make sure you lay it out and it should make sense. So your bottom cut piece should look like a whale. That's what I think it's perfectly. That's what somebody said to me and it stuck in my head. It's so silly that I remember it. This is the whale's little pointy nose and this is its tail. And so you're looking at it and it's all nice, smooth, continuous lines. So I'm going to flip right sides together and pin. Now, whenever I pin bra pieces, I start off with a notch. Pin the notches together first. There we go. And then I go to one end. So like I said, on the back piece, you may find that there's a, it's not quite level and there's a little bit sticks up. Well, that's fine, as long as you're aiming for the quarter inch seam line. Pop one pin in there. Again, if you don't want to use pins, you just want to wing it, that's fine. Whoopsie. If you want to use Wonder Clips, use Wonder Clips. I pin this bottom bit together. Again, with its little uh, dog ear. Okay, switch this on again. Set it up for a quarter of an inch seam allowance and sew these pieces together. Come on, there we go. They're a little bit, they're short bra seams. That's one saving grace about them. <laughs> they are short, but they're a bit tricky and a bit fiddly. I'm not happy where I put that pin. Sorry, let me move that. That's better. So if you've got one of these fancy pants stiletto things or um, a little pair of scissors or just sharp nails, uh, you can use them to get everything in the right 
position and smooth things together. Now the good thing about Geoplex is that it does, it's not slippery like silk, but it does slide, the pieces do slide against each other. So it's easy to make sure that you can maneuver them and make sure everything's lined up as you want them to be as you're going along. So, locking stitch, threads, and off I go. Remembering to remove the pins, at least that time. And that time. Fasten off the end or not, depending on your machine. Snip the threads. How many of you don't snip the threads as you go along? How many of you throw your threads on the floor? Um, I like to put it in the bin. Okay, so that's a bit wonky, but in my defense, I am slight, sitting slightly sideways on to how I normally would so that you can see what I'm doing. That's my excuse, I'm sticking to it. Uh, so that's my seam. And again, when I pull it, I'm quite happy that that's not a perforation, and that it's a nice secure seam. So now I'm going to press it again. Well, not this one again, but I'm going to do pressing again. Okay, so I'm just gonna press this little seam that I've just stitched, grab my iron again. And this time I'm going to use my ham. So this is a little bra ham that I've made myself from a uh, free downloadable pattern and I can't remember who it's by, um, but it's available on online if you look for bra ham. Charlotte, I think the name of the pattern is called. Anyway, uh, it should be, the idea is that it's nice and um, smooth. This is not because I make bras for myself, my two daughters and my daughter-in-law were all different sizes. So I've tried to mangle this so that there's a, an appropriate um, appropriate curve for all of us. Um, yes, that's, that's my story. And I want to press this open like this, so that in a minute I can get in here and top stitch it. I'm not aiming to press this completely flat. It won't go flat. This fabric is too springy. And even if you did, you'd get that horrible imprint on the right side that we don't want. So all I want is to be able to get access to this seam so that I can top stitch it. So that there, I'm not using the cloth because as I say, this is duoplex and it's okay and my iron isn't overly hot. It's just steam that I'm going for. And with these little hams, you can just pick it up and move it so that you can sew, sorry, not sew, iron press a nice smooth curve. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's open enough for me to be able to top stitch it. So, I'm going to come back to the machine. Back at the machine now, I'm going to top stitch this seam that we've just stitched and pressed. I'm going to make sure that I've got my settings where I need them to be. Let me just move my needle. There we are. The plan is to sew either side of the seam. I want this seam to be flat when it's finished. I don't want it rucked up to tickle me inside my bra. So I want to sew as close to the seam as I can. If you are not uh, experienced enough at, at handling fabrics to get that close, it doesn't matter. You can sew at here as long as you've caught these edges down. Okay, I just don't like to sew either side of the edge because that gives a kind of quite a wide gap between the stitching that shows on the right side. But whatever you like the look of, whatever makes sense for you, then that's what you should do. Um, I'm going to do it the way I usually do it and we'll see how that turns out. So, got this lined up where I want it to be. Stitch length changed. Hold on to my threads. Oh, sorry, the main thing, the most important thing is that I'm sewing this, top stitching this from the wrong side because I want to see exactly where these are sitting. 
bearing in mind that we've pressed it but we can't press it flat there's no guarantee that these won't spring up as I'm sewing it if um, lots of people lots of students they are in the habit of sewing from the right hand side not the right hand side the right side and that's what they do and some of them are successful and some of them aren't um, and that's fine I've never been successful or 100% successful I like to see what I'm doing so I do it from the inside just in case you're thinking what on earth is she up to and off I go again you're looking for accuracy so we don't need to be doing it at top speed maybe we could do it a little bit quicker than that and down to the end I'm going to sew off the end again and make myself a chain so that I can swivel around and come back If you want to do two separate rows then by all means do two separate rows better okay so there's my two rows of stitching so far so good we have openness but we've still got these frilly bits here that we don't need so I'm going to go in and trim these off I like to use which I can't see one second excuse me there we go what are you doing over there come back I like to use these uh, plique scissors or duck build scissors sometimes they're called uh, because you can get in between the layers and you can trim um, really close to that stitching we're trying to get rid of the excess seam allowance if your fabric is duoplex then you can trim as close as you like because this is not going to fray if you're making this out of silk you really don't want to be doing this <laughs> um, but I'm guessing if you're a beginner and this is your first bra you're not using silk any case um, I like to use these if you haven't got those and don't want to buy them then just your normal um, short bladed scissors as long as they're sharp that's the main thing as I said right at the beginning scissors pins needles they must be sharp the way I like to do this is to pop it over my finger like that because that makes this free edge stick up and easier to get to it takes a bit of a bit of practice um, but it really honestly it gives me the heebie-jeebies when I see people doing it flat I think oh no you're gonna slip underneath but they might just be more skillful than I am anyway this is the way I like to do it hook it round make this edge stand up and then snip away small little snips don't go too mad okay if you again see how lovely those scissors are they really get under this layer or else your normal scissors just make sure they're sharp and make sure that you take short snips at it okay like that Bring those bits away you can see now that there's no um or hardly any fabric that's going to um, tickle or do anything weird and it's like that on the outside now obviously I'm sewing everything in black uh, so that you can see it um, if it's the same you're using the right color matching color if this stitching goes a little bit wonky nobody's going to really see if somebody's that close to your bra that they're going to comment on the straightness of your top stitching well you're in the wrong you're with the wrong person if you ask me okay I'm going to sew this other side well no I'm not I'm going to cut this other side just quickly then we will bring in the top cup as I said before I think if you've got more than one bottom cup seam in the style of bra that you're making then you just do this sew press top stitch trim each one of those seams until you've got your bottom cup complete 
you've got your whale looking nice and chubby. Okay, now let's get the top cup and pin that. This is my whale, this is my boat, there's its funnel. I want to orientate these properly. You, you can very easily get left and right uh, cups switched up if you're not paying attention. This is where the, if you, uh, when we talk about cutting out and everything and I suggested taking a picture once you've laid everything out in order, you can refer back to that if you're not sure. I like to, if I have a, a, a edge that's very curvy like this one is, I like to have that down against the feed dogs when I'm sewing because the feed dogs will help to ease that extra fullness in if necessary. So when I pin the top cup to the bottom cup, um, I'm gonna flip that over on top. Now, I've got a notch here that I did remember to mark. The notch that um, would be here on a one piece bottom cup is actually now my seam. So I'm matching the seam up to the notch in the top cup and the same process. First of all, match up the notches. Then go to one end. Don't bother about anything that's going on in the middle. Go straight to the end and pin it. Now visualize, as I said before, where the two fabrics will intersect at the seam line so that you end up with a little dog ear if, if um, necessary. One end. Then straight round to the other end. Again, ignore the middle for the time being. And it depends sometimes on the um, this particular inner edge of the cup. Some bits overlap, some bits don't. Sizes don't. These partic this particular size, the two ends meet nicely like that. Okay, so you can now put some more pins if you want to, or some wonder clips or whatever. Um, there's a temptation to want to do it in there because it seems very curvy. If you want to, you can. Just don't put them every half inch. You'll be there all day taking the pins out, having spent ages putting them all in. So have a bit of freedom, wing it, and see what happens. And if you don't like it, you can unpick it. So I'm just gonna switch this back on and reset my quarter inch. Sorry, let's move some of this clutter out of the way. Get my threads out the back there and get this in the right position. It's, it is quite fiddly and so, as I say, use whatever tools you have to hand to get that in the right place. Hang on to your threads. Do a locking stitch if you have to, or sorry, if you need to, can do. Oh my goodness. Um, just don't do a back stitch. And organize this all together. So off we go. Nice and slowly, there's, there's no rush, there's no competition. The main thing is to be accurate. If necessary, sometimes um, I get my left hand in between the two layers so that I can all, uh, manipulate this layer with this hand and the top layer with that hand. This seam isn't too uh, tricky, so I don't need to do that in a minute. If your pattern has been well drafted, which um, I must say the pinup girls patterns all are, then your pattern pieces will fit together really nicely. You shouldn't be having to struggle uh, too much with excess fabric um, in one layer. You can maybe see that that wants to peek out a bit there. So just persuade it gently to do as it's told. Sorry, I sewed over the pin. Oh, I sewed over two pins. Oops. Don't 
do as I do, do as I say, as my mum used to say to me. Okay, that's that seam stitch, check both sides. Um, there's no run, run, ooh, pleats or wrinkles. Then I'm going to press this flat, press it open and come back and to top stitch it. Okay, I've pressed this open now. Um, I think, looking at it, this is the cross cup seam. It joins the upper and lower cup, all bras. Uh, it's the same terminology. It um, is a seam that runs from one side of the cup to the other. And you can see, I think, more than anything, how this seam really needs to be top stitched to hold of these seam allowances open. If you, you can press them down but I don't like doing that because you get a, you know, in one place you've got three layers of fabric and in another place you've only got one. Uh, but some people like to do that and if you like to do that, again, that's fine. But I want everything to be as smooth as possible. So you can see um, that this seam demonstrates why you need to top stitch and also it demonstrates why you really need to top stitch from the inside. Because it's, sorry, I can't, walk and chew gum at the same time. There we go. Um, I defy anybody to successfully sew this seam from the right side without being able to see what's going on underneath. This bit you can see just really wants to lay flat all the time and it's going to need some persuasion. If you are able to do that, then again, good for you. I'm not. And so I'm doing it from the inside just as I did before. So I've got all my machines set up for the needle position and the stitch length that I want for my top stitching and so I'm going to just go for it. Smooth the fabrics and the seam allowance open as you go along because even though you've steam pressed it, it is, as I say, springy and it wants to go back where it wants to go. off the end come back the other way if you want to and when you get to um, a cross place here where you're crossing over an existing seam do be careful go slowly because it's quite bulky And it wants to kind of jump up out of the way. So that's that done nicely. I'm going to repress this and trim away all the excess just as I did before with these, um, just like this with the duck build scissors. Um, but before I do that, um, we'll just finish this off by sewing the strap on, assuming that you have a pattern that uses a fabric strap. I just make sure I put everything back where it should be for sewing a seam. The um, strap pattern piece as you can see is tapered at one end this end is the end that's going to go through a, a ring and a strap adjuster so that's not the end we want we want the blunt end and it attaches here right sides together as everything is when you sew it uh, and you can see there's a little sort of quarter inch up stand on this piece to guide you where it should be it's going to pop pin in there, line this up, double check all of your settings that you're on, ready to sew a seam, put my threads out the back and just don't beep at me, 
There we go. And just pop along there. Then we need to press this seam flat and press it so that the seam allowances go into the cup and then do two rows of top stitching just as we did on the side seams in the frame. And then we'll have two completed cups ready to be stitched into the frame. I think I got ahead of myself a bit uh, just then. You, We've made one cup and then I've gone ahead and made the second cup in the same way, um, top stitching and pressing and trimming and so on and so forth. And so what we should end up with well, what you should have now is your frame and two cups. So I've just laid them out here so that you can see the way everything's meant to go and how you can check for yourself before you put your left cup on the right hand side and so on. So when you lay your cups out, you want it to be that so that the straps are going outwards like that. You can imagine your shoulders are here and this is going outwards. You can see where the um, orientation is and where it's going to match. You can hopefully see those, those notches are going to match there. This seam is going to match with this notch. This seam will match with this notch. And the top edges at the bridge and the upper cup will match. Now when it's laid out like this, it kind of looks, um, how can these possibly fit? together and it does, does look a bit impossible we will get to that in a second um, the same with the sec the second side so as long as you've got these notches mar marked up I think you, it's almost foolproof that you you get the left and right cup the same way although let me just check oops anyway <laughs> hopefully you can see if you take a little uh, diagram or we refer back to this when you're doing yours this is how it should look and now we're going to tackle sewing these cups into this frame and starting having it look like a proper bra now we're going to start to put the cups into the frame um, I've just showed you the orientation of it all and I explained that I like to sew the, or maybe I didn't, but I like to sew with the curvy side underneath up against the feed dogs and therefore I'm going to flip the frame onto the cups and then whiz the whole lot round so it's the right way up for me. Okay, I hope that made sense. If not, you can rewind, obviously, and have another look. So. I'm going to start, I've started off by flipping it over and this bottom, I'll show you on this side, this bottom notch I've matched with my seam, the lower cup seam. Then as ever, I'm coming round to the other end. This happens to be the underarm end. Check the tops are level, check the notches match up and a pin in there. Then all the way around to the bridge section, the top, this is the upper cup edge and this is the bridge and they are going to go here and this seam is definitely going to give you a dog ear bit here. So line this up, if it helps you to mark the seam allowance in there, do that. So this is quite important because it, it does sort of show um, unless you get a big bow to put in the middle. Um, so I've pinned it and you can see it's at an angle like that. The bridge is at an angle to the upper cup because that's how this is going to work. Then I can look at any other notches. So I've got this notch here. So this notch matches to the cross cup seam there. Now if you're not making a classic, you're making another style of bra, then hopefully there will be similar notches on the um, frame and cut for you to follow. But when I s pinned this section together, this looks too long now. 
If you're familiar with regular sewing and you've done um, princess seams in anything, you'll be uh, familiar with this, the way these two opposite curves seem to go together. But it's important that you keep this slight curve. This is the wire line. This is where your underwire is going to sit in between your breasts. And you need to maintain this slight curve. So I'm popping another little pin in there. To make sure I don't just think, oh, that's too big and just let it do what it wants. Um, here's a similar thing is going to happen, but you can see when I push them together, they fit together so well. I don't really need a pin when it comes to that. And then there's this notch that we checked before. I think I'll just pop one more pin in there. And I won't do any more than that. I'm not going to pin this curve together because as you sew, the fabrics need to sort of find their own way a little bit. Um, and sit where they need to sit. If you force them into, force the layers of fabric into position and hold it with a pin, if it's not happy, as you sew, it will, you know, pleat and do weird things. Um, I know it sounds, it seems a bit scary sometimes if you're really new and you're doing a quarter inch seam and weird curves and so on, you want the security blanket of a thousand pins, but it really won't help you. <laughs> so, um, Try and use as few pins as you can. You can always put some in if you're really having a struggle. But that's um, as many, and I probably wouldn't put quite that many in really, but that's as many as you would want to be doing this with. So check everything's all nice and tidy underneath. I'm going to put the machine back on, so I'm sorry if the lighting goes a bit weird again. Okay, I'm setting my quarter inch seam setting and pop in this in here so let me move those out of the way oops <laughs> okay so make sure you've got your threads at the back make sure you've got these lined up nicely lower that hold your threads and start to sew and um, it really is useful if you can get into the habit of keeping your left hand between the two layers in here and your right hand on the top. You, it really, really helps to manipulate and slide everything and make sure it's all um, sitting there together. And take out your pin. And your next pin. Okay, so this is quite a big um, curve, but I'm sure you can see, I hope you can see anyway, that it really does fit together so nicely in these patterns that you don't need a thousand pins to keep it all under control. Okay, just, you, Keep stopping, keep checking. There's no rush, just chill. And remember to breathe. Nearly there, look, hardly takes any time at all. sewing over this pin. I'm on a roll here and I don't want to stop. Oh, I have stopped. Okay. There. So, the moment of truth, let's turn it to the right side and our knees need to check that there are no wrinkles, no puckers, everything fits in nicely. So as I say, if you're reasonably accurate with your sewing and you've got a well drafted pattern, everything should fit together and everything should line up. Okay. 
so you don't need to watch me so the other side if you want to, you can just rewind and repeat this one if you want to see it all again i'll go ahead and sew the other cup in and then um when i come back we are going to i'm just thinking ahead am i right yes i am we're going to then get the, break out the findings bag and start to look at sewing on the elastics um and so on see you in a minute now all of our fabric components for our bra are stitched together um, it's time to look at the findings the that's the elastics and the hardware and everything to do with a bra that isn't um, a fabric if you're not familiar with the different types of elastics and the different types of findings um, that you can get then do please take a look at my video what goes where and why and that will explain where each of the different elastics go and the job that they're meant to do so i'm not going to go over that all again now um, i just want to say that there are large findings and small size findings the difference between them is in the width of some of the components um, the actual amounts i.e the meterage is the same in both sizes the things that differ are the bottom band elastic in the small kit it's half an inch wide or 12 mil and in the large kit it's um, three quarters of an inch wide or 19 mil and your pattern will tell you what width of elastics that you need the difference is going to be in the width of the bottom band um, and some designers use different widths for different sizes other styles have the same width no matter what size you're doing and so on you will need to check that out on your pattern envelope the other thing that differs is the strap elastic there and there the larger sizes just have slightly wider elastic for a bit more support um, and the other thing that differs is the width of the hook and eye which sorry for the rustling there we go in a large size it's three wide three deep and in a small size it's two wide and three deep so those are the differences. The differences lie in the width of things, not in the length of things. So I'll just pop this out of my way for a second. I'm also gonna pop the hook and eye to one side because we won't use that for a while and concentrate on the other items in here. So I have my various elastics and I've got the underwire casing and I just want to before we start sewing stuff together I just want to show you a little tip with the underwire casing that will really really help you and I admit that it seems like a faff and um, I for a long time kind of forgot to do it and then kept struggling and, and then suddenly I remembered oh yeah I'm supposed to do this and I do try and teach my students to do this um, you don't have to do it at this stage you can do it earlier on when you are pressing other things because from now on we're not going to press anything on the on the bra um, but we're just going to do some steaming some pre-shaping with the channeling now the channeling comes in one long length I've already cut this piece in half because um, I have two cups so you need half the channeling for each cup um, and then I'm going to pop over to the iron and just so you, show you this nice little trick that once you get into the habit of doing it, you'll be really glad you don't. I just want to share with you my little um, tip for dealing with the casing. This casing is a straight strip and it's going to need to curve around like this to fit on the bra. And as you can see, it doesn't want to very easily. The outside edge has to curve more than the inside edge and it doesn't want to. So I like to pre-shape it with my iron and some steam. It's one of those steps that you think, oh yeah, it's a little bit of a fuss and you forget to do it. I like to do this at the beginning when I'm first pressing my seams and top stitching because then the iron's on and after I've stitched the cups into the frame, I don't need to use my iron again. So I try and remember to do it then. And the thing is, I'm going to just quickly run my iron around here whilst curving this slightly and let the steam shape this uh, casing piece. It's easier for me to show you than it is to tell you. So I'm just gonna get my iron, make sure it's nice and steamy. Whoopsie. <laughs> and I'm gonna just rest my iron and curve it round like that. The trick is to do it quickly, um, even if you have to do it two or three times. 
you don't want to labor at it because you don't want to crush it one tiny bit more there we go and so pretty quickly you can see it's shaped round like this and it's lying flat I'm not trying to emulate the exact shape and size of the curve for my bra because there's no need to I just want to build in a bit of curve to that so now it's all ready for me to go I'll just show you that again on the other piece is I can't tell you how much this really helps when you come to attach the casing to your bra you'll be so glad when you've got into the swing of doing this that you'll love me forever okay so plenty of steam quickly just curve this round okay give it another go just until you've got some curve and it's sitting flat and it's really the steam you need I'm not pressing on this very hard I'm just allowing the steam to shape this and give it a moment or two to cool down and there you are two lovely pre-curved pieces of casing ready to make your life a whole lot easier right I've got my channeling pre-curved I'm just going to sort out these other bits and pieces so this is the the wider one is the bottom band elastic and that stays all in one piece the top band elastic goes along the top edge and up the strap either side of the bra so it we need to cut it in half because we have two sides to the bra so we're just going to whoops there we go okay two pieces of that one piece of that the neckline trim that stays in one piece and then we just need to do something with the strap elastic this has a there's enough elastic in my, um, my kits to assume that you're going to have all elastic straps but this bra doesn't have that this has the fabric straps and so we don't need all this elastic I'm going to first of all cut it in half because in any case you'd need two straps one for each side Um, put one piece to one side because I'm not going to use it and then the other piece I will cut in half again I feel a bit like a magician I'm going to magically form them all back together in a second uh, okay so I have this is curving this elastic slightly from where it's been on a reel but it will straighten out when it's used it's not deliberately curvy about this is roughly 10 inches um, which is about 25 I think centimeters or so and this is all we need for the back part of each bra that's going to eventually attach to the straps so I just need two pieces more or less 25 centimeters long and I'll put that to one side as well and make a start on sewing the elastics on the I each um, type of the elastic is going to be stitched on in the same manner I generally start off with the bottom band just because it's one long continuous piece and I can kind of uh, and it's pretty much straight so I don't need to overly think things too much we're going to do the now the first pass that I spoke about earlier when we were doing stitch practice the first pass of the elastic is so that we can get this fancy edge secured ultimately it will turn to the inside and just look like that so I think I know for me anyway and I think for most beginners we we know that the elastic is going to end up on the inside and that's where we think we're going to sew it first of all but we're not going to the first pass is always done on the right side of the bra because it's then going to get turned to the inside so starting um, at one end of the back I'm going to line up the straight unfancy edge of my elastic with the bottom edge of uh, the bra the plush soft side is uppermost okay and then I'm actually going to stitch along this scalloped edge as close as I dare get to the edge without disappearing off into the fancy 
um, pattern. So I'm going to just use a wonder clip. You cannot, well, I say cannot. No, you cannot. I won't allow it. You can't pin this. A, it's too tough really to get pins through the elastic and the fabrics underneath. And you don't need to. You need to just control it. Um, you, pinning it is a pointless waste of time, I think. I'm going to switch the machine on now. And as I say, I've said before, hopefully it won't make the light, the lighting too weird. Okay, so I've got my chart. Let me get my chart. Here we did at the beginning. I'm doing my narrow zigzag, elastics first pass. I'm going to, I want to have width two and length two. That's what I decided before. And so let me just set that up. Oopsie daisy, wrong way. Two and two. Okay, you may want to practice this first. Um, if you've got any uh, scrap elastic to practice with, or if you want to see what elastic you've got left over on the yardage here, but I want to get my, let me take that away, I guess it might be in your way. My aim is to get my needle when it goes left, right, left, right. When it goes to the left, I want it to sit on the elastic, but as close to the fancy edge as I can get it. It takes a little bit of practice. You need to go slowly, um, certainly to start with. Don't go mad because well, there's no need to. What you want is accuracy in this particular pass. Right. So I'm lining, I've got these level at the end. Pop this underneath. And then I can never remember whether my needle starts on the left or the right. Looking at it, I'm hoping that it's going to start on the right so I can get my positioning correct. But as I said, if you go slowly at the beginning or you even hand crank it you can see where your elastic your needle's gonna yeah i was right okay so just wiggle this until i am happy where it's going to strike on the left hand side and i'm going to do just a few little stitches Do secure it and then I can take this away. So I've said that it's not a good idea to, oh, <laughs> that track. It's not a good idea to pin this, but you do need to keep control of it. I hold it in my right hand, kind of like, just like this, and lay it on top of the fabric as I go. This, it's elastic, but we're not gonna sew on stretched as elastic we often do in other projects perhaps but it does need to have some tension and this is a really difficult thing to try and explain to somebody you you kind of will will feel it feel it if i just let this elastic sit on the top and get stitched it would end up being all wavy i want some tension on it but i don't want it to be stretched so i kind of look at my um picos and I think, well, I'm going to pull this just one Pico's amount. So that comes there. I'm going to just pull it to there. So it's just nice and taut, but it isn't um, stretched. So let me get going. Can you see that the stitching there is just close to the edge? When I turn it to the other side, you can just see the fancy edge. You don't really want to see any of the elastic. So I'm going to go along, oh, let me get to the middle actually. bit of tension the 
the bottom edge of this classic bra is um, straight some bra patterns you might have has a have a curved bottom edge and the pattern instructions should show you how to deal with that I can't really demonstrate how to deal with that because this pattern has a straight edge but just follow the instructions that are, are given to you um, although it's a straight edge because it's cut on the fold the center comes up a little bit it's more attractive that way I'm going to make it easy the thing is that elastic doesn't go around corners it just doesn't like it so we need to manipulate the fabric to allow the fabric the elastic sorry to stay straight you can see when I get to here this goes off at an angle and the elastic won't deal with that very well therefore I'm going to snip at the V just maybe half three quarters of the width of the elastic certainly no more than that because you don't want to risk it peeking up I could be a bit more brave here actually there we go then that will enable me to hold the fabric straight so that the elastic can stay straight let me just get to the center and I'll show you so tiny bit of tension and here I am at the center here so then I'm going to swing the fabric round to maintain that straight line there obviously the fabric will open up a little bit that's the point of cutting it to open it up into a V but that's fine in case you can see that this has opened out a little bit I'll show you um, easier when we get to the other side but I haven't gone up to the stitching there's still some fabric there to make that safe so I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching this um, across the other end the other end again with a, that just that little bit of tension and then I'll meet you back here I've gone right to the end here and you can see that there's plenty of elastic left over this is a 36 band if you remember at the beginning and so I have this much elastic left out of the uh, elastic that was in the kit so you can see there's ample there and I'm going to now cut that level with the back and this can go in my practice pile for another day so that's all the way along there you can see this has opened up slightly in the center to allow for that v shape to happen and that's my bottom band first pass i'm going to do the same thing with the other elastics i do all of the first pass first <laughs> Um, on all of the elastics and it's just so that I once I've got my eye in to getting the needle up close to this edge I don't want to lose that and also I don't want to be con continually changing the settings on my machine because it's um, absolutely sod's law that I'll forget to change it at some point and do it and I have to unpick it nobody wants to do that so I tend to do all the first pass um, together um, let's have a look at how we're going to handle this top band now so it's going to start the top band elastic will start at the end of the strap and go all the way down the strap into the underarm area and across the top of the back band so the same principle I've cut my elastic in half as you saw I want it so that the plush let me turn this off I think you can see it better the plush fluffy side of the elastic is uppermost and um, the right side of the bra is uppermost i'm going to just pop this along so that the plain edge of the elastic is along the bottom uh, along the edge of the fabric and again i can't pin this anywhere so i'm just going to put a wonder clip there to start with and just feed it along the same principle i want my stitch to be right close to this pico edge so let me start that this is why i like having a big table it starts to get a bit kind of cumbersome as you've got all the bra together and you're trying to sew the elastics so i've got that lined up i have no idea where that's ended up left or right so let me hand do that 
except of course I've just switched my machine on so it's not even on zigzag anymore see what I mean about <laughs> you can be distracted and forget what you're doing so there we are let me start that so let's see where this is going to go okay that's going to um, miss my elastic so I want to bring it back slightly this way yeah I think that will do hold my threads again and start off you probably can't see because of the glare from the machine lights but on the on this elastic on the inside when you look at it there's a sort of a faint shiny line that runs just along the top edge there when you're close up you can see it properly and that I tend to use that as my guide for where I want or hope that my needle's going to go so Whenever you stop to readjust, make sure that your needle, if you have the option to have the needle stop uh, in the downwards position on your machine, then set that. Um, or if not, hand crank it, because when you start to move things around, if you've got your needle up, then the thread can start to travel a little bit and you're never going to go back in exactly the same place. So it's a good idea to try and remember to always make sure that the needle is in the down position whenever you take your foot off the pedal. So again I'm aiming for just a tiny tiny bit of tension just to stop the elastic going all wiggly woggly. I can already tell that I'm not really happy with that. It's too far away from the edge. I'll go back and have a look at it in a minute. If you do start to think that it's gone wrong um, you can either get it back keep going and get it back and then go back into that bit afterwards or stop and unpick it now but I, I always go back afterwards and keep just keep going it's a little bit tricky here now because as I said the elastic must stay straight but your fabric your bra is starting to curve into the underarm section so stop and manipulate your bra So I'm just past the strap attachment now and into this underarm section um, and we do at now want to put a bit of definite stretch onto this elastic because you want the bra to hug your body in this section you don't want a gap to form so um, I kind of think of maybe half to three quarters of an inch of stretch you will get the feel for how much to stretch it by and you'll see anyway when you when you put the bra on if it's too baggy in that section then you'll know that next time you'll need to stretch it a bit more and once I get to the cup seam I don't need to stretch it now because it, I've got past the underarm section and I just want my slight tension back. I don't know why I did that. Stupidity probably springs to mind. So. <laughs> Oh, I'll regret having used that automatic scissor in a sec. Right, okay, let's have a look. I When I turn this back, I'm kind of okay. There I'm not happy. There's too much actual elastic showing. This bit's fine, this bit's fine. And then when I said I'm not happy when I first started off, this is why. There's too much of the elastic showing. So I'll just go back and fix that. And then I can unpick the line of stitching that's not right um, afterwards. Again, that's the way I do it. If you want to stop straight away and, and um, unpick, then that's entirely up to you. But I kind of just like to get the whole thing done 
and then go back and fix anything I'm not happy about. So I'll fix that and then I'll show you how to start off the other side um, and then I'll stitch the rest of it on. You don't need to watch me do that. Back in just one second. Now I've satisfied myself that I made a better job of that um, on this side. I'm going to show you the other side. Now I started on this side at the top of the strap and worked round to the back band but in order to make it straightforward to uh, more straightforward to sew I'm going to start at the back band and work back up to the strap. This is because when you're sewing you always want the bulk of your work on the left hand side as a general rule. If I tried to start at the strap like I did before and um, come down then I'm sewing kind of awkwardly for me I'm sewing on this side and uh, for me it doesn't work for you it might so if, if you find that easier then give that a go but like I said I can only show you the way I do it and I do it this way so I'm starting this time at the back band don't sew your elastic to this section okay this is where the strap elastic goes you're just sewing in a straight line along the top edge of your bra so again I'm having my fluffy sorry turn that off I'm having my fluffy plush side uppermost um, and the right side of the bra uppermost I've got the flat end edge of my elastic against the edge of the bra and the pattern side towards the inside of the bra and this time I'm going to remember to reset my machine there we are and start on the other side so just um, a little wonder clip to hold it while I get everything lined up same process I'm hoping that my needle on the left is going to touch this edge here and I'm hoping that I won't have to go back and do it again so let's just get this in position there yeah, that's quite good and so um, again that little tiny bit of tension now that I've got my needle in I can take that away um, so tiny bit of tension and I'm going to sew all the way around I'm going to do the same thing when I get to the between the cup the cup seam and the strap I'm going to stra stretch the elastic a little bit to make the bra hug my underarm area then I'm going straight up the side of the strap There, I've wandered off the path of righteousness a little bit here. Um, if I really, really wanted to, I could redo that again. But um, all things considered, it's going to get turned to the inside. It doesn't really show. If it bothers you, then you can either trim the fabric off or redo the stitching. Um, but if this is your first bra. It's very unlikely that it will fit you perfectly and that you'll be wearing it. So if you want to strive for perfection and redo it, then that's fine. And if you think, okay, I realize what I've done wrong, but I'm not gonna fix it now, that's also fine. I have completed all my first pass stitching on all my elastics now, 
trimmed the excess off and trimmed up all my threads and so on and I'm ready to now look at doing the second pass of the elastics um, which as you may recall is going to be done with a three-step zigzag I've done it along one edge already just to show, show you how it looks obviously this looks a bit clunky because it's black stitching but you can imagine that with lilac stitching that looks quite pretty the idea is to hold the elastic down on the inside so we don't have anything just flapping around there um, if you remember our chart at the beginning I've got my three step zigzag settings top band and neckline elastics are going to have a width of four because as you can see they're narrow um, I don't do this bottom band elastic second pass at the same time as I do these I don't do the bottom band until I've sewn on my casing and I'll explain why when we get to that stage you don't have to do that obviously like I've said I can only show you what uh, I do the way I do it but I will explain when I get to that stage why I've left it for the time being so I'm going to do the top band and the neckline I've done one side of the top band already just to show you how it looks what we're aiming for you can see the little pico sticking out and the elastics nicely firmly held into place underneath so I will switch to the other side we're turning everything to the inside now so flip your bra over so that the wrong side is facing you and turn this under now just one little thing that I'll show you when I trimmed my elastics off I didn't trim this piece up by the um, neck the back strap scoopy bit here I didn't trim it straight because this is at an angle and when I turn it to the inside had I cut it straight it would stop short at the end here it's only a small thing and I might just be the only weird person that does it but that's what I do I cut it at an angle and then we'll get it started so let me just get this under here smooth everything out I've set my machine for three step zigzag on the width that I decided on and I think I don't think I need to put a one to clip there as I sew I'm going to just be gently pushing towards the right hand side with my two little two fingers here on my left hand I want to make sure this is a nice crisp finish I don't want it to be end up when I turn it to the wrong side right side rather I don't want to end up having lost my picos because it's rucked up so as you sew just gently ease it don't push it like that of course because you're distorted but just a bit of persuasion and I'm going to start off with make sure I hold my threads just to help it get going So if you're not familiar with three step, I hope you can see if I go if I can go slowly enough that it's three tiny stitches one way and three back the other way. Okay. Just position it, make sure you're exposing the picots and pushing slightly towards the right hand side. Now I've got round to my cup seam here and do you remember we uh, between the cup seam and the strap we stretched the elastic on the first pass you need to stretch it again on the second pass because if I simply turn this to the inside I'm going to end up with a series of series of pleats here so just stretch it the same as you stretched it before be careful at this strap attachment section here because it can be a little bit tricky make sure you've got everything out of the way and smooth and then straight up to the end of this strap I'm coming up to the end of the strap where it tapers 
um, and the two elastics are sort of crowding each other out a little bit. So I like to try and make sure that I flip back this pico edge on the neckline trim out of the way. Can you see? So that I can stitch here and not catch that down where I don't want it caught. does I have to admit it does start to look a little bit messy at this end but this is the end that's going to go through one of the rings to attach it to the elastic strap and it gets folded back and you don't see all this potentially messy bit here hopefully if you can do it without making it messy then that's fine but um, if you do don't worry it doesn't show so that's my two um, top band elastics stitched down on two passes there and there. I need to turn this to the inside. This is just the same process. Turn it to the inside. Keep your eye on it. Keep pushing towards the right hand side and all the way to the other side. And then when that's done, I'll come back and we'll have a look at tackling the casing. Now I have my top and neckline elastic stitched down in their two passes. Um, looking I think I hope you agree quite pretty I as I explained I haven't done the second pass on the bottom band elastic and now I'll explain to you why if I flip this over in a minute we're going to stitch our I'm going to stitch my I should say uh, pre-shaped pieces of casing on and it stitches onto this seam the cup seam here um, just grab it when it's all completed it sits here like this um, but before I stitch the second side down I need to attach it to the, the frame the seam I beg your pardon around here then I need to turn this up now depending on let me get that out of the way depending again on how well drafted your pattern is whether you've used the correct width of elastic as suggested and how accurate your sewing has been so already there are a few variables happening here um, it's possible that you may not have quite enough space in here before you get to this seam for your band to sit if I were to turn this up first and I hadn't been entirely accurate and it sat here I wouldn't be able to sew my casing on if I did I'd end up pushing the edge of this elastic down it would all be extremely uncomfortable and this is the position directly under your breasts and this is where um, you don't want anything rubbing or thick or anything like that so just to be on the safe side in case I've done anything um, accidentally wrong I don't turn this up until I've stitched on at least the first row of stitching for my casing because if I have got not um, haven't left enough room here I can trim my elastic down so that it sits flat this isn't going to happen on here I can see it fits already but that's the reason why I don't do the second pass of the bottom band elastic at the same time when I've done the other two you if you don't want to do it that way as I keep on saying but um, if you don't want to do it that way and you want to just do everything all at once and of course that's fine uh, I just have been caught out before and thought well let's not do that let's just wait and see what happens okay so I've got my lovely pieces of um, pre-shaped casing it's going to be stitched along this seam but it's going to be stitched on the inside edge the cup edge if you like of the seam and currently those seam allowances are trapped up here in the elastic so I'm going to snip this free first of all right at the bottom of the elastic be very careful use sharp scissors you don't want to cut into the seam you just want to free the seam allowances like that and that needs to happen also at the center front like that
and around at the other side. So that's why I said earlier on, it doesn't matter which way your seam allowance is sitting as you sew the elastics on, they're gonna need to be cut free anyway, like that. Now they are, there are a number of, um, well I say a number of ways, there aren't. There's just two ways. You can either just hope that you've got it right um, and offer it up and carry on sewing, or you can double check that you're sewing it to the right, the correct uh, side of this seam. As I said, the when it's finished, the casing flips down it covers up this seam so again it's lovely and smooth inside and also it will cover up this edge of the elastic underneath there so it's very important that i stitch it to this face the cup side of that seam if i stitched it this way along that line then the only place this case it can go is up into the seam and that's not what we're aiming to do so to double check that we're sewing it the right way. Get your bra wrong side up and tuck everything from the right hand side underneath your cup. And that will then expose this edge that you need to sew to. Okay. I can't think of any other way of, of um, trying to help you to make sure that you don't stitch it to the wrong side um, and it's probably one of those things that you have to actually stitch it to the wrong side at least once to set it in your memory that you've done it wrong but what I can do is try and help you as best I can so that's the way I'm going to do it so bra wrong side up everything on the right hand side of this seam that I'm going to sew it to tucks to the back and then my casing is going to fit here I'm going to place the facing, not the facing, the casing plush side up and I want the left hand edge of the casing to sit just on top of my stitching line where I joined my cup to the frame. Do not let the casing go inside, i.e. to the left hand side of that stitching because you will be then sewing into the cup and taking away the cup volume as you sew it. So make sure that you can just see that row stitching just to the left of your casing as you sew. You will need to make sure that you leave a good inch, inch and a half, that's maybe three or four centimeters, sticking up above your elastic. This is where you're going to feed your underwires in when the bra is finished. And if you haven't got enough sticking up here, you can't feed the wires in properly and you can't then close this channeling off because you've only got a tiny little bit of fabric to try and work with. So with all of those things bearing in mind and also making sure that the curve that you've put into your casing is curving in the correct direction, I'm going to put a wonder clip on here. Pins don't really get through all of that channeling and the two layers of fabric. So I'm putting it there. I hope you can see that I can still just about see that stitching. And when I sew, I'm going to sew as close to this edge as I possibly dare. All right, let me put the machine on. I'm using a straight stitch and I'm adjusting it to the 3.2 length that I decided at the beginning when I was doing my practice pieces. I need to get as close up to the top of here as I can and I've found the best way you need to keep this elastic all out of your way. So another wonder clip in there leaves that exposed as much as possible. If I find that I can't start right at the top here, it doesn't matter, I can go back and sew in there afterwards. There's enough going on as it is without fretting too much about starting right at the very top because you can go back and fix it. Okay, 
So this is what I could do with another couple of pairs of hands, but get this all lined up as much as you can. Pushed across there as much as you can, which in this case appears to be not very much at all. There we are. That's a touch too high. Pop that there. I'm not going to do a back stitch because I can see that I, I can't get in as close as I'd like to. And so I'm going to have to go back and restitch stitch that section. So as I say, do the best you can. If it's not quite right, you can redo it. So my foot down and do a couple of stitches. And then readjust to make sure that I am going to then be able to continue getting in as close as I can. Now it's very important that you keep everything tucked out of the way. All I want to see is this seam allowance and this stitching line from before. I don't want to catch anything else in that stitching that I'm doing now. So that there. Keep your eye on everything. and so nice and close to the edge. Do a small section at a time. I find it easier to hold the channeling with my right hand, use my um, middle finger to control it, sort the bra out with my left hand. Sometimes it can feel like um, patting your head and rubbing your tummy, but you'll find out for yourself what's most comfortable, but you cannot pin this channeling in place. You absolutely have to freewheel it. Um, so you just need to practice. It seems a bit scary to start with, but you'll get the feel for it as you go along. Okay, short section at a time. Stop and readjust, get everything out of the way and place that there. So I'm being careful not to go past my stitching line on the left hand side. Okay, it's quite a bit going on at the bottom now. It's quite a steep curve, so check that everything's where it should be. Hopefully you're starting to see the advantage of having pre-curved this channeling because it, it automatically is, is happy to follow the, the curve of the cup where if, if it was dead straight and I'm trying to force it to curve, it becomes difficult um, and you can end up with sort of the fabric puckering and all sorts of things, especially when you do your second pass. So hopefully you'll do that uh, pressing as I suggested and you'll find it really useful. When I get up to this point here where my neckline trim is, I don't want to sew right up to the very edge because I'm going to need to do some bar tacks to close this channeling off. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, that needs to be kind of flush with this line. I want a little bit of leeway to maneuver my channeling to get it in the right place for bar tacking. So I'm going to stop maybe three eighths of an inch a centimeter away from here from the top rather so that I can do my bar tacks and then I can when I've done the bar tacks and so on I can just go back and catch that edge down a little bit more if I need to okay Take that off, trim my threads. And at the top here, as I was predicting, uh, because I was having a, an issue positioning it, it's gone wibbly wobbly here, which I don't want. So I can turn it to the inside and just 
redo that little bit. So now I'm really glad that I used a longer stitch length because otherwise that would be such a pain to undo that little bit there. But you can see, I hope, that now this channeling is more than happy to lay flat. The curve is in there and it's behaving itself. And then we are going to eventually catch this edge of the channeling down as well so that it's not flapping around inside. But now I've got my channeling in place, I can double check that that's going to fit. And, and when I've done the other side with channeling, then I will do this bottom band and then I'll come back and do that. So I think um, way back in another video or possibly at the beginning of this, it can seem a bit higgledy piggledy. It's sort of, well, I've started off doing elastics and now I've stopped and now I'm doing something else and I've half done that and now I'm going to go back to the elastics. But hopefully you can see that there's a reason for it, that there's some method in my madness anyway. Like I said, you're sick of me saying it, I know, but this is how I do it. And if you find a better way of doing it, or if your pattern instructions tell you to do it in a different way and that works out better for you, then that's fine. As long as you appreciate that in the end, this all wants to be nice and smooth. So I'm going to sew the other side of the channeling on now, but I can start off with doing a bar tack to position it here at the beginning. This again, probably seems all a bit backwards and forwards and higgledy piggledy, but this may make sense to me and it may make sense to you at some point in the future. Okay, a bar tack, get my um, channeling curving in the right way so I do it in the right place. A bar tack is like you find on uh, belt loops on jeans if you're not familiar with it. We, uh, you can imagine that the end of the channeling has to be really firmly, convincingly closed, otherwise your underwire when it's on, um, in your bra rather than the bra is on you, will want to work its way out. So we need to do a nice secure way of closing it. And a bar tack consists of very small straight stitches across and back. And on top of that, you do a fairly narrow, quite close together zigzag stitch across and back. So you've got several lots of stitching. If you did four rows of stitching, straight stitching backwards and forwards, you can end up having the effect that I was saying before of actually perforating your fabric. And instead of strengthening the closure, you're actually giving it um, an excuse to just eventually rip away. So that's why the second lot is of zigzag and that holds it um, in a different series of holes, if you see what I mean. So you're not perforating your fabric, you're casing too much. So I first of all need a marker pen, which of course I haven't got handy. Just bear with me one sec, found it. I tidied it up, not like me. So I will mark a line a little way down, about an inch or so down. You're gonna have an idea when you sewed your other side on how much spare channeling you've got to play with. So um, that seems perfectly acceptable there. Because, sorry, I haven't explained why I'm doing this. Because when you come to sew the second cup on, you have to kind of carry on where you left off. So instead of starting at the side and working back to the middle, you start at the middle and carry on round to the other side. Otherwise, as I was saying with elastics, you end up having to try and sew in a very awkward way. Uh, again, if you can manage that, that's fine, but I can't. So I'm going to need to start here. And so I'm going to want to start with my bar tack already stitched. You don't have to, I just like to. So a bar tack, straight stitch, quite short. So I like to do about 1.6 or so. The reason I suggest leaving at least an inch there is I find it easier to hold this in place like that with these fingers either side of the needle to help me to push this backwards and forwards. Or you could do it that way. But you definitely need something to hold on to this side. Don't try and stitch your bar tack right at the top. It will just mangle up in your machine. So I've got my line marked and I'm just gonna go backwards and forwards once. Okay, 
bring my needle up and now change to a zigzag a narrow zigzag I like a width of two which seems to be a pattern for me really but I like a width of two and bring the stitch length right down to something like 0.6 certainly below one because otherwise the zigzags are too far away from each other to help so again backwards and forwards once right on top of the stitching that I just did so because this is so thick and narrow when you go in reverse put your um, machine to back stitch it can get quite snarled up and it doesn't like it so that's why I like to hold on to it and just persuade it like that I of course would do this with white uh, white stitching or whatever colour to match your channeling because it can look a little bit um, ugly really I suppose but I want you to see what I'm doing. So now I've got a nice um, uh, barrier here to stop my underwire from working its way out. And then I'm going to snip this quite close to the stitching. one side make sure I adjust my machine back to straight stitch and the 3.2 setting I want before I get tempted to start sewing so I've stitched this to here dropped my other piece of channeling excuse me stitch this to here and I'm going to carry on from this side so again everything to the right hand side of where I want to sew I'm tucking underneath I just want to be able to make sure that I'm always stitching um, with the cup uppermost, if you see what I mean, the inside of the cup uppermost. So now I've done my bar tack and so I can position this to be right at the top of that seam allowance. I want my bar tack, the end of my channeling, to sit just under the elastic, the edging for the um, neckline trim, like that. So I'm definitely going to need a wonder clip there to hold that in place. And I might put another one in the top. Not that it was overly successful on the other side, but who knows? There we go. Pop that there. Get my stiletto or my little scissors and hold everything in place like that. Put, hold my threads, put my needle in by hand. That's not going to sit where I want it to, so come forward a little bit. Okay, so once you've got your needle in, securing it, you can take away your clips and tuck everything away. Keep checking, keep tucking it all out of the way. Sound like somebody from RuPaul's Drag Race. But anyway, um, and I'm going to start sewing. Okay, I'm happy with that. And again, match the left hand edge of the casing just to that stitching line there. Keep tucking everything back. round near to the end again I need to squish this 
elastic out of the way so I can just get to the top of that seam there before it's snipped. This is easier coming this way than it was to start off in this in this position. Okay. There. Now I have uh, both sides stitched on. I need to close this other piece, other side of my channeling. I need to check that when they're both um, both pieces of channeling are turned back there, that there's space for the two pieces to sit next to each other. Okay, and I've marked, you can see I've marked where um, the corresponding place comes on the other side for my bar tack to be stitched. So I'm going to do that now before I forget, because I have been known to forget, and jumped on to do something else. So hold that out of the way, because what I want to do is to stitch the bar tack through the casing and just the um, seam allowance. I don't want my bar tack to show on the right side because it's not it's not very pretty, however carefully you try and sew it. So I want to keep the bar tack on the inside if I can. So I just want to stitch that bit there. So I've held this back out of the way and I'm going to put another clip just below where I'm going to sew to make sure that the seam allowance doesn't flip back on itself. So pop that in, reset my machine for the bar tack. So straight stitch about 1.5, pop that under there, hold on to this and I kind of keep my thumb hovering over the back stitch button. I don't know why, um, but I think it's such a short seam that I just need to be ready. So I'm going to sew across here once, and then I'm going to go back, lift my needle up, narrow zigzag to width and about a 0.6, 0.7, uh, length and across over the top of the straight stitching and back. And done. And now I think I might go back in and just catch that edge just in case. 3.2 again and go back and catch that and do a locking stitch. I don't want my casing and my bra parting company at any stage. my threads and Bob is my uncle and now I can cut this excess off because this is the center front I don't need to keep it any longer than necessary so I'm snipping off there like that and that's my practice piece of channeling for another time so that's that done I'm leaving these pieces I don't necessarily want this massive amount here I'm going to trim it so I've got just an inch or two sticking up. Okay, now I've stitched my channeling on, I can turn my attention back to my elastic and check that this will sit there and that will sit there and they won't interfere with each other in this section and nothing gets rucked up. So I'm very happy with that. So I will go back now and do my second pass my three step zigzag on the bottom band i'll just show you starting off just to refresh your memory because this is the bottom band and it's wider i'm going to put my stitch width on uh, four point well 4.6 as it turns out because this can can take it it's a bit a bit more robust so 
turn it back I'm going to push gently towards the right hand side with these fingers hold my threads and off I go okay so just like that you can see that the slightly wider width is more suitable for this slightly wider elastic so I'm going to go all the way across to the other side and meet you back here in a second all done with my second pass on my bottom band elastic so that's all finished and now we need to um, deal with this free side of the casing and hold that down um, and I'm just going to, to do it from this side you need to be able to see the edge so you don't wander off I've reset my machine straight stitch 3.2 length that I used before and I'm going to just offer this up to the machine I want to start just below the elastic there I don't want this stitching to go up into this section here um, be, oh well just because it looks ugly but what I want to do is to sew on this edge you cannot go too close in on this edge when we stitched this first pass down we wanted it right on the edge we want this also to be right on the edge here because the wire has to go in here now the wire itself is quite narrow but the tips are not the tips are finished with a, a bulbous kind of a thing to so that it's not sharp and that's the part that has to be able to pass in between your two rows of stitching so don't wander off too close to the center with either a lot of stitching because you will only have to unpick it when you find that you can't get your underwire in so I'm going to uh, keep my eye in and follow as close to this edge as I can and just keep everything nice and smooth so I'm just sort of smoothing it pulling it towards me slightly the fabric just to make sure that this on the wrong side on the right side rather doesn't end up looking sort of like that and messy if it doesn't it's your first bra then then that's okay I mean it you know if this is not going to be a, a masterpiece of, of sewing for you if the, you're absolute beginner because you're not used to doing with dealing with any of the fabrics you're probably not used to a quarter inch seam allowance you're not used to all the different stitches and so on so um, don't beat yourself up if it's not an absolute uh, sewing a masterpiece of sewing but of course you do want it to be accurate because if your stitching hasn't been accurate when you come to try this bra on for a fitting you won't really know whether it's your um, inaccurate sewing that's the issue or whether the bra actually needs to be altered so go as carefully as you can but don't fret about making it perfect I suppose is what I'm trying to say so hold on to my threads I'm going to do a locking stitch because I really don't want this um, pulling away from the bra at some point in the future especially since I throw all my bras in the washing machine and then into the tumble dryer which may be absolute sacrilege to some of you listening but um, that that's my lifestyle doesn't allow me time to mess about doing hand washing and even if it did I wouldn't want to so if something can't go in the washing machine and the tumble dryer then I don't want it so off we go So now where I'm crossing this over and putting the casing on top of the elastic, I want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then as I'm coming round into the home stretch here, I do want to make sure that I'm keeping the um, edge of the the cut edge of the casing flush with the bottom of the elastic so just to make sure I'm popping a wonder clip there because even though I have pre-shaped this this is quite a steep curve and this outer edge has to stretch um, more than the inner edge and I do want it to be nice and square at the end So just check in. It wants it's gonna to want to ruck up, so I'm keeping control of it here as much as possible. Pop that out. I'm 
go right up to the top of the piece of casing and do a nice locking stitch. Actually, I'm going to have a quick check that I've still got enough thread. I hate that when you're sewing away and you've run out of thread. The, as you can see from all the different passes on the elastic, it does use quite a lot of thread. So make sure you start off with a, a full bobbin and do check um, once you're part way through that you've got plenty to be getting on with. Okay. So that's my outer edge of the casing stitched down. I do like to go back and do a second row of top stitching um, just because like I was saying here earlier on, two rows looks deliberate uh, somehow. And I'm sure if you check most of your ready to wear bras, you'll find that they've got two rows of, of um, top stitching. So I'm gonna do that now just to show you. This time I am gonna do it from the right side. I um, just want to reset my needle so I can line it up properly. Let me just start it off and then I'll talk to you. I want to make sure that my two rows of stitching are um, parallel to each other. So as much as I want to make sure I'm quite close to this edge here I also don't want it all over the place so I'm sort of keeping my eye on where this row of stitching lands on my foot compared to where it sits on the inside um, as I say I can't veer off too far past this edge because I will start to take up space in the casing which I don't want to do can see I've kind of veered off a little bit um, here because I haven't gone back and replaced this as I said I was going to but I'm ignoring that for the time being. And then you can see that's relatively parallel and obviously if this was um, the same colour thread any little wibbly wobbly bits wouldn't really notice. I'm not happy about this I am. So check on the inside, make sure you've got a nice even channel all the way through your casing and that your top stitching hasn't um, messed up all your careful positioning from before. Um, and then and that's that so I will go back go um, to the other side finish it the same as I finished that side and then I'll come back we'll look at doing the strap elastic and the hook and eye and then pretty much we'll be finished. Now we come to the point where we need to make our straps up um, with the rings and sliders strap adjusters. You may recall I had a one meter length of strap elastic in my kit. I cut it in half and put one half aside because I have uh, fabric straps on this bra. Then the remaining piece I've cut into two, uh, two straps obviously. So now we're going to add the strap adjusters. So I'm going to take one piece of the elastic and hold it with the plush side uppermost. So there's the satin side, this is the plush side and hold that and take your slider and we're going to take it in the top hole. So come, from, come behind the slider and go into the top hole. It's a bit wiggly because obviously the slider has to be a snug fit for the elastic otherwise it won't work. In the top pull it through a little bit and then back down through the bottom. Again a bit fiddly there we are like that 
and just just need a little bit of an extension here and in a minute I'm going to stitch back and forth across here to hold this nice and securely in place actually that's a tiny bit too long there we go so that's one I'll show you again so that's the satin side of the strap we want the plush side facing us and take the slider and come behind the slider in through the <coughs> excuse me in through the top hole like that and back down the bottom hole and I'm not going to lie it is fiddly there okay and I'm going to stitch across here so let me just pop the machine on again apologies if the lighting goes a bit funny I find it easier to set my needle um, as far over to the right hand side as it will go if you've got that facility because I want to get my stitching as close to the slider as possible I don't want it to be able to move about too much um, when it's done so I pop in that there you can uh, maybe use a zipper foot if you want to if you haven't got the facility to move your needle but just get as close as you can without risking breaking anything and then I'm going to sew back and forth four times the reason it's four times is that then all the threads end up over the same side and I can cut them all at once it can be three but it definitely needs to be more than two okay so and again and that's done snip that and then you can snip the excess elastic quite close to the stitching like that so that's that done that's the slider attached looks a bit manky on the back doesn't it I didn't properly hold on to my threads but anyway um, so that's the slider put on I'll just quickly do the other one Now it's time to put the rings on so just grab the ring it doesn't matter which way around you put this on um, and slide it right up close to this slider like that and bring this free end round behind and then take it through the top And down through the bottom now we've covered up that um, stitching there and then we can just slide this down and there's your ring attachment and there's your strap you can buy ready-made straps um, not from me because I don't sell them but you can buy ready-made straps but in all honesty it only takes a couple of minutes once you've got the hang of it so I'll just show you again because it can be one of those patting your head and rubbing your tummy things so grab my strap and put the ring through then bring this free end round so now I've got the satin side facing me bring the free end round behind and go in the top slot and back down through the bottom slot just there and pull it through and there you have it just like that as Tommy Cooper would say okay so that's those done we can set them aside just for a uh, few minutes the next thing to do um, so that we can stitch these straps onto this strap scoop in the back band we need to check before we go ahead and sew that that this 
space here where the hook and eye is going to go is the right size. As I was saying before, when we, I was talking about the um, channeling underneath the cups and so on, it depends how accurate you've been with your sewing of the bottom band elastic and your cutting and so on and so forth as to whether or not this length here is still the right size for your hook and eye. So the easiest thing to do is to grab the hook and eye. It opens up like this so that you can sit your fabric inside here. I can't do it waving it round in the air like that. Oh gosh, there we go. This actually, unfortunately in some ways, this actually does still fit nicely. The, this tip has to come to here. You don't want any overhang or anything happening like that. So that's, that's fine. And now I know that I can stitch my elastic on as long as I'm pretty accurate with that. If the um, fabric was too wide, you would simply mark where this edge came and blend a line through to the top of by the elastic here so that this bit fits. You don't want to end up, if it's too wide and you force it, it will end up with a pleat in it like this, which you don't want. So um, as I said, unfortunately, this actually does fit, so I can't show you that, but anyway, I'm sure you get the gist. So put that to one side and get my strap. Now, if you have the facility to do the lightning stitch on your machine, which is a stitch, well, you'll see it when you, when you come, it's a straightish stitch, but the needle goes back and back and back. It's a, really, it's a stretch, straight stitch. Um, it's, it's very nice. It looks quite attractive and it's more the kind of thing that you would see perhaps on ready to wear bra. It doesn't matter if your machine doesn't do that. Just do a regular straight stitch, but on a slightly longer length, maybe the three or so that you've been using for top stitching. You don't need to use a zigzag stitch. So I'm just going to refresh my memory as to what the lightning stitch is. There we are. And you'll see it when, because I'm using black thread on this white elastic, you'll see it. I need now to get my elastic and line up the right hand edge of the elastic on this side to that little angle there. I'm going to start off with it in this position, although actually the elastic's going to go across there, but bear with me and you'll understand why I hope. So I'm lining that up. Make sure that you're accurate here because you've just checked with your hook and eye whether it fits. And if you now overhang this elastic or bring it in too much, it won't fit. So you would have wasted your time doing the checking. So try and be accurate. Pop a wonder clip there. This uh, part of the procedure for I think a lot of people seems very counterintuitive. What we're doing is we're going to sew along this left hand edge of the elastic. You think probably that you want to sew on this edge because that's what we normally do. But don't do that. We need to stitch on this side and all will be revealed when I've done it. But I'm going to line up my needle with that side there. Hopefully. There we go. I want to sew as close to this edge as I can, but not off the edge. Otherwise you'll lose that nice little edge on your elastic. So I'm going to sew here and I'm just going to start off doing um, two or three stitches to anchor it. Can you maybe see the needle comes forward and back, forward and back as it goes along. I can take this off now. Okay, so here more than um, anywhere else, it's obvious that the elastic is not going to bend. We want it to follow that scoop and it's really not going to. So we have to keep the elastic straight and swizzle the fabric around so that the edges match up. Do it carefully. You may need to do it in some couple of little stages because you don't want pleats to form. But can you see I'm bringing the fabric around to match the right hand edges together. So a few more stitches. It seems to 
be happy now. And I want this top edge where my elastic is, um, the top band elastic, to end up square onto the strap. I don't want it to be at an angle like this if possible. I want it square on. Make sure everything all lines up and then just carry on um, up as far as the edge of the, um, the top of the band. Just keep checking you've still got it square. When you get to the top of the fabric, don't go on to the elastic fancy edge because that's nothing substantial to hold it. Get to the top of the elastic, leave the needle in, lift up the foot, swivel it round, and I'm going to sew at right angles just about halfway across the elastic. Don't go all the way across. I just want to aim for somewhere around the middle here. I'm happy with that. Again, lift up the foot, pivot this round, and sew back down to the beginning, halfway across the elastic or thereabouts. which have now got stitched in, don't they always? There we go, and this one. Yeah, so now you can see that this is halfway across. Turn that off. It's now halfway across. So the next thing to do is to trim away this excess power net Okay, we just want that there. Now, the reason for this is, if you stitched uh, the strap elastic right on this other edge, it will not, it will kind of stand proud from your body. It will buckle because it's, um, when you're wearing the bra, the, either side of your elastic stretches differently. A bit like when we put the casing around the cup, because you have a curve, the outer edge of the curve has to stretch further than the inner edge. If you've secured both sides at the same time, you can't get any kind of play on it. You're forcing the elastics to work together. On your back, so this is as, um, on your back and the curve of your back and so on and up to your shoulder blades uh, isn't flat, or well, shouldn't be, and therefore the, your body will force this to stick out if it's been secured too much. So that's why I only sew halfway, or you should only sew halfway across the strap elastic. And then we don't need this fabric underneath. And it's not gonna fray, so you can trim it right back like that. And then this elastic can stretch and go around corners, do whatever it needs to do without standing proud and buckling. That's the idea anyway. Then the last thing to do is to cut this square. So this has now come at an angle because we've curved it around the fabric. So this needs to be completely square, otherwise it won't go into the hook and eye. So you can do it by eye, you can mark it with a pen, but we need to just nip that corner off. So now it's a straight line, all right. Hopefully that all makes sense. I'll show you on the other side, just using a straight stitch, because if you don't have a lightning stitch, um, you can use the straight stitch instead. So you can see how this still has all of its stretch like that. Okay, the other side is um, opposite, <laughs> funnily enough. You're now working the other way. So I want to, sorry, that's annoying me. 
So there's my scoop that I'm attaching the elastic to and this is my hook and eye line. And this time I want to put the um, left hand edge of the elastic into the corner. Okay, like this. And I'm going to sew on the opposite side to the corner. I can't really, it's one of those things you just have to sort of see it and do. I can't think of a way to explain it that doesn't actually end up making it more complicated you know how explanations are sometimes it's just easier to see it so when you've got you've got the straight line of the back band for the hook and eye attachment then this slightly curved scoop part and always you're sewing on the opposite side of the elastic to the scoop maybe that's the easiest way um, to explain I don't know you'll have to try it and tell me <laughs> whether I whether I've helped or not so this time I'm going to use just a straight stitch and I'm going to make it slightly longer and pop this under here. So satin side up, that corner into the scoop and I'm sewing on the opposite side. So start near the edge, but still on the satin part if you've got this type of elastic. I'm gonna just take a couple of stitches to anchor take my clip away again you can't really use pins to hold this on to start with unless you've got quite tough pins and then they tend to make quite big holes but um, however you want to however you're able to keep that in position I want to hold that there now I've done a couple of stitches to anchor it I need to swivel it around and this time I have to swivel it the opposite way because it's the opposite side. So hold your elastic. Let me wiggle that out the way a little bit. There we go. Hold your elastic straight and swivel your bra around until you're happy with it. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches with it at that angle. And then I'll swivel it a little bit more so that I end up with the top line of the back band at right angles to my elastic like I did on the other side. And scooch this over so that the, the fabric and the elastic are level. So again, I'm sewing up the side of the elastic that's closest to the main part of the bra not on the opposite edge, the free edge, if you like. Go up to the top, but still staying on the fabric. Swivel. And sew halfway. Also, and then swivel again and come back down to the beginning. So although this is straight stitch, it still allows the elastic to stretch. You kind of think it won't. Normally when you use straight stitch on stretchy fabrics, the stitches pop, but for whatever reason, it doesn't happen this way. So you still have that looking there. So I need to trim this away again. Actually, whilst it's got here, the full size, I can see where my power net fabric wanted to lie. So I can snip that first. Got these scissors upside down. There we are. There. That's that. And those are the straps stitched on. So as you can see, regular straight stitch or the stretch lightning stitch. Either way, it still stretches the way you want it to. So that's the straps attached to the back band. Now we can um, put the, well, now what should we do? Let's attach the fabric strap to the elastic strap. There we are. I tend to leave the hook and eye till the end. I don't know why. The hook and eye and the bow, they, they're my finishing touches. So 
with the bra the right side up facing you I've got my strap attachment on the right hand side I'm going to bring this strap across and then go in from the front and out to the back just the same sort of amount that we did when we did the strap elastic through the slider, just like that. Hold onto it or clip it or whatever before you sew it because you want to make sure that you haven't got the strap twisted. So I haven't, that's, that's fine. But I have two or three times got it twisted, stitched it back and forth four times and thought, oh no, and had to unpick it all. So just that couple of seconds to check before you sew is well worth it, I think. Again, straight stitch, I'm moving my needle across to the right hand side as far as I can get it. And pop in this in here. So all the hardware stuff is on the right hand side. The fabric is here. And when you fold it back, this end has, was tapered. But you just wanna make sure that you haven't got it poking up or poking down that the end is properly hidden behind the rest of the strap and holding it there making doubly sure you're not going to hit the metal ring I'm going to go back and forth four times again piece off. Um, I don't want it catching up when I'm wearing the bra so once you're happy with it stitch everything. You can cut everything back um, as close to the stitching as you like because all of these fabrics the duoplex and the power net don't fray so you're okay with that. And that's one strap attached. So the same on this side with the bra the right way up you bring the strap fabric strap over to the elastic strap and from the front poke it through that's how I do it you might have your own system but as long as you end up with the strap the right way round and not twisted you're okay pop that in and sew across the other strap attached. So we're nearly there now. We just need to do the hook and eye. And I double check this by, I start off with the bra, the wrong side facing me, and bring the edges in. So the two back pieces are facing each other. Whoops. And then the eye section goes on the left hand side face up like this and pop that in. Now I always do it like this and then when I get to the machine it all falls out but and then I have to do it again but that's what we're aiming for. We want the bottom edge to be level with the bottom edge of the hook and eye. The top edge will overlap slightly because of the angles but that's what you want. Um, different designers or well, different bra makers really have different ways of sewing this on. The conventional way that I think Ready to Wear um, uses is to sew a box, if I draw it on, is to try and stitch in a long narrow box. Something like that, so along and up and back. And that makes it nice and secure which yeah obviously you want your bra fastens to be 
super secure otherwise it will fling open at a moment's notice during the day which you don't want so that's a nice secure way of doing it but it is quite fiddly and you have to bear in mind that in here are the let me see in here are the ends of the eyes so the eye is that shape and inside it curls around like that so there's metal inside here just along here let me turn the light off you might see better there's metal here so if you go too close then you're going to your needle will hit the metal and you won't see it coming because obviously it's all covered over so um, you can do that the other side where the hooks go is even more tricky and treacherous because you are going to sew it I'll, when I place it properly I'll go through it again but you're, what you're going to do is to have to sew this from the wrong side because you can't have these hooks go down against your um, throat plate because they'll get stuck so you have to sew it this way and there's even less space between the edge of the uh, fabric and the hook metal parts of the hook inside because again inside the metal comes to here so along that line there so you've got a much more narrow space here to try and get your um, long narrow box in I have had students who think who have said oh I know I'll just use my zipper foot but you can't very easily um, because you let well you can I suppose but you'd have to do two separate rows you can't do a box because as soon as you sew down here and swivel it around that way suddenly your zipper foot is on the wrong side um, but if you want to experiment with that of course you can um, you can do whatever you like but I have found um, that the easiest way to do this is with a zigzag stitch so I'm going to show you the way I do it if I can find the there we go oh dear butterfingers today if you can find the hook that you just dropped the eyes that you just dropped that I always call these the hooks and I know that they're not but it's very confusing I know for students and I'm trying to purposely to say these are the eyes but I just promptly said they're the hooks but these are the eyes and these go on the right side up and pop in there I'm going to no I'll tell you what I'll try and do I'll try and do the conventional square let's see how that goes okay so hold on to my it's not a square it's a rectangle but you know what I mean okay, go right down down to the end or close to the end still still staying on the fabric and not wandering off onto the fancy edge of the elastic because that has no substance to it then swivel 90 degrees and two or three stitches across mm, yeah that's two and pick it up and swivel it again I'm going to swivel it back the other way otherwise I've got everything landing in my lap okay keep everything out of your way I could have done one more stitch but anyway back up as close as you can to the edge of the fastener haha <laughs> that's my way of calling it I don't have to remember whether it's hook or eye then and then one more time up 90 degrees back a couple of stitches and then fasten it off so I'm going to use my locking stitch this time you could actually use a back stitch if you wanted to you really need this to be as secure as you can get it So there it is, I should have gone a bit further there. There it is um, stitched on in a long thin rectangle which is the conventional way and it's really nice and secure. All right, so as I said, it's relatively easy to do it on this portion of the fastener but the when it comes to the hooks, 
it's a different kettle of fish altogether. So when we do the hooks, you position it with the wrong side of the bra uppermost and the hooks uppermost. And again, it's got a little envelope to slide it into. So let's pop that into there. And you've got probably half the amount of space to do your long thin box in, which is a challenge in itself, but you've also got these hooks that want to get stuck underneath the um, presser foot. So I do a zigzag usually. I'm just gonna show you that version as well. It needs to be quite narrow, so only maybe 2.4 or something like that, and relatively short together. Not a satin stitch, but just pretty short. So maybe about, um, 0.6 or 0.7 length and I'm going to position this here I will back stitch this to make sure it's super secure but already you can see that it doesn't once it slips off these hooks it doesn't want to go back so let me just persuade this so if you get your scissors or your stiletto and you just pop it under the hook part and just help to persuade it through. I've been a bit overly cautious here. I could have gone a bit wider. Let me put my stitch a bit wider to show you. That might be better. Okay, so just help to ease it through when it gets to the hook section. And back stitch it. And box your uncle. There. Well, I'd like to say this was with deliberate error to show you something, but it wasn't, it was just a straightforward mistake. I hadn't checked that I'd poked this properly underneath there. Can you see that edge of the elastic should be properly up underneath there. So I would take this off and do it again uh, because this is not secure. We well, can see actually there's a hole. Okay, so I need to pop that back in there. But so that's my, that's your options. There's the zigzags, you can see that's a bit, sorry, let me turn this off. That's a bit too narrow there. That's a bit better. Obviously, I would use white thread if I was making this bra for real, uh, so you wouldn't really see it. But that's what I usually do um, on my own bras. I'm sad, I can do this. <laughs> it's just, it's just difficult. And once you've committed to do it on this side, you have to do it on that side. And as I've already just shown you, it's really a lot more tricky. But if you're very um, skillful at sewing, I'm very familiar with it all, then you can go ahead and do that. But if you're a relative beginner, um, especially with bra making, then you need to find the way that works best for you. But above all, you just need to be aware that there is, you can see it's a bit like an iceberg. You can see metal on the top, but there's more metal underneath and you do really need to be careful. So that's my hook and eye fitted on like that. There we go, my straps are done, everything's done. I just need to put the bow on, but I'm not putting the bow on because I'm not convinced that this is, um, well, I wouldn't put a bow on here anyway, but the bow goes there in the middle. Any sort of little mess up you may have had in the middle here, you can cover it up with a bow, just like that. And then that is your bra finished for now. We've still got this channeling open here. You have to put your wires in. The colored tip of your wire, if you've got them um, from me or anywhere else that uses the colored tip method. I think just about everyone does, otherwise how on earth would you tell what size wire is what? But the wire goes in there, round to the front. Try your bra on, which is what we'll be doing in the next series two where we're looking at fitting. Try the bra on. If it doesn't fit properly, then that's fine. You can take the wires out and you haven't wasted the wires. But ultimately, you would then, assuming this is perfectly fine and you want to keep this bra or any bra, we would then do 
having put the wires in, a bar tack across here and trim off this, this excess. But that's really, really the very last thing you, you should do when you're really happy that the bra fits you properly. Otherwise you put your wires in and you've got to unpick it all and everything to get them back out. So in the meantime, um, in fact, I know some people who don't do that, who just flip that inside, a bit shorter than this, just flip that inside um, so that then when they wash their bra, they take their wires out to wash the bra. I don't do that. I think I said before, if you can't put something in the washing machine and the tumble dryer, then I don't want it. So, but if that's what you want to do, uh, yeah, then that makes sense. You just need to flip that over. I wouldn't feel entirely safe that that wire, this wasn't going to work its way up and the wire find its way out at some point. But anyway, that's a uh, personal preference. So this is the bra all made up. Um, as I said, this is a classic bra. But the principles are the same whatever bra you put the band together first you put the bottom cup pieces together next then you add the top cup and the straps if you're having fabric straps then you put the cups into the frame then you add your elastics then you add your underwire channeling then you do your straps sew the strap elastic on sew the hook and eye on there you go it'll take you more than two or three days <laughs> well i um I can, if I am able to sit down start to finish from cutting out to finishing a bra, I can usually do one in about three hours. So, but then I've been doing it for four, four or five years. But it doesn't take all day. You just need to take your time. The first bra um, may take you, literally may take you a couple of days as you do a section and then think about it and process it all and so on. But don't go at it like a bull at a gate. Um, even though this is your first bra and you probably won't be wearing it, uh, you, there's no sense in being slapdash about it because then you lose accuracy. So you want your sewing to be accurate. It doesn't just doesn't have to be fantastically neat. I wouldn't be overly happy with that bit there. So I would probably unpick that and redo it. But that's if it's a bra that's going to be a keeper. This bra wouldn't be a keeper. It's the first one in this size. It needs trying on and fitting. So uh, be accurate. But don't be overly fussy. Don't drive yourself mad. I'm picking tiny little stitches that have gone slightly wonky. At this point, it doesn't matter. Just get into the swing of it. Get used to the pieces, the feel of the fabrics, the quarter inch seam allowance, dealing with these elastics. That's all more than enough to be getting on with without being super fussy about the stitches. So hopefully this has encouraged you and helped you to make your first bra. I will be looking at the fitting the band and then making a fitting band and I'll explain that all properly if you're not familiar with it in the next series of videos. Thank you so much for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you again soon with the fitting side of things.